There is a magical operation of maximum importance. The initiation of a new Aeon. When it becomes necessary to utter a word, the whole planet must be bathed in blood. Tavern's closing. Best be on your way, stranger. What? No mug of ale for a weary traveller from distant Corhagen? I can reward you well, for I am of noble blood. I stay open for no man in these dark times. Things come with the night that no sane man would welcome. And so I left. Cold of heart and soul. Forced to the road and the long, bitter night. That's him! <laughs> <laughs> hey, Victus! <laughs> End it! Now! Fay Victus, suffering to the conquered. Ironic that now I was the one suffering. Not anything as pedestrian as physical pain, rather the cruel jab of impotent anger. The hunger for revenge. I didn't care if I was in heaven or hell. All I wanted was to kill my assassins. Sometimes you get to kill. The necromancer Mortanius offered me a chance for vengeance, and like a fool, I jumped at his offer without considering the cost. Nothing is free, not even revenge. <laughs> you will have the blood you hunger for. I awoke to the pain of a new existence, in a dank womb of darkness and decay. The world had changed to my eyes. I had not expected such cruelty from the light, 
for in the embrace of the sun I could find no comfort, only malice. This would change in time for the worse, along with other things. When rainfall comes, vampires are wise to find shelter from its acidic touch. <coughs> Hunger and weakness are no bar to vengeance's call. I would find my slayers and send them back whence I came. Have a seeker. If we put you down once, we could do it again. What trickery is this? Their sneering faces were forever etched upon my memory. I had crossed death for this moment. My mind was empty save for one thought. I would kill. There is no greater release than that from vengeance sated. With my assassins dead, my quest was over. <coughs> 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 Tis not over, Cain. These fools were merely the instruments of your murder, not the cause. Look to their masters, look to the pillars, and gain way to the fortress of the mind. The necromancer had offered me no warning as to what my resurrection would entail, and yet I must confess in my haste I had not sought one. Was his gift a curse? I would seek the pillars for an answer. The pillars of Nosgoth. Even in life, few sights have moved me such as this. I marvel that such beauty should grace our dying world. Napraptor, your madness has shattered our dreams and blinded you. Keep your distance, or I'll send you back to hell, spirit! There is nothing left of me to fear, vampire. I'm only a shadow of my former self, Ari, the balance of the Circle of Nine. Even so, I can provide the answers you seek. I seek only a cure. There is no cure for death, only release. You must destroy the sorcery, the sorcery that is now poisoning Nosgoth. Only then will you realize peace. The nine of the Protectors of Hope were sworn to use their powers to preserve our world. Now these pillars have been corrupted by a traitor. My murder at the hands of this beast drove my love Napraptor mad. Now he spreads misery and pain among the Circle crumbling the very foundation of Nosgoth. You must restore balance. You must right the pillars of Nosgoth. I care not for the fate of this world. Then for yourself, Cain. Beware the unspoken. Each Circle member was bonded to the pillar he served. The pillars reflected the mental state of their servants, and as the minds of the Circle degenerated and descended farther into dementia, the pillars crumbled. To restore them, each member of the Circle had to die, and the artifact that served as their link to the pillar had to be returned. Only when all the pillars were restored did Ariel claim my curse would end. And so, my hunt for Nupraptor began. In bat form, I can travel great distances with ease. From my vantage in the heavens, no region of Nosgoth is forbidden to me. My lupine form enables me to move like lightning and leap over obstacles barring my path. But the guise of the wolf brings with it its own kind of hunger and rage. The gypsies, purveyors of distrust and superstition. Most of their babble should be taken with a pinch of salt, since the gypsies often tinker with weary travellers' minds. However, a few gypsies have something interesting to say. 
There are benefits to traveling beneath a human guise. The threat to my person is lessened and much information can be gleaned. However, the illusion is flimsy and any act of aggression on my part can break the spell. Vasabunt lay, its glory now stained and faded, a faithful child in the looming shadow of Nupraptor's retreat. Nupraptor's keep lay west of Vasabunt. I would seek to cut the cancer from its heart. The wind carried screams from the west. I couldn't help but smile. Someone else in this world was suffering more than I. From the depths of the retreat's eye sockets, I viewed Nosgoth in a different fashion. The glass seemed to warp the image and taint the color. <laughs> as if Nosgoth needed assistance in making its corruption apparent. So, Malik, have you come to fail the circle once more? Leave, Paladin. I do not need your protection. Come, Cain. Come, share my pain. So, this was the mentalist Nupraptor, this broken, pathetic little man. Yet crippled as he was, he would not yield without battle. Very well, old fool. If it is death you seek, I will not deny you. beloved will convince Ariel that I have accomplished my task. I placed Nupraptor's head before the Pillar of the Mind and watched on as it dissolved into the stone. The Pillar accepted its offering. Thus, it was restored. Nupraptor was but the genesis. Forever tainted by his madness, the circle was beyond redemption. For them, absolution lay only in death. In me, they would find their deliverance. But first I had to defeat their shepherd. Malek, defender of the Nine, lay in a keep to the far north, past Vasabunt. It was time for me to test the wrath of the Pillar of Conflict. Death in the circle breathes life to the pillars. For every pillar there is a token. Only with these shall they be restored. But to reach a warrior, you must first breach his ward. Find Malak and destroy him. Only then will the circle fall. Malak's bastion, perched defiantly on the mountaintop, black as night against the blanket of snow. What manner of man would choose a land so harsh and utterly devoid of life? The interior was as cold and sterile as the snow outside, with empty suits of armor and sharp, cruel steel lining the walls. The towering metal structure gave birth to these wraiths. I could hazard only a guess at its function, fusing the souls of long-dead warriors to their armor so that they may do battle once again. Life without blood? What a travesty! Even the gentle snowfall is lethal to a vampire's well-being. It would seem Malik's destiny with my blade was postponed. Perhaps Ariel could offer further guidance. Does the Seraphin elude you? Very well. Go east of Malik's bastion. The Oracle shall give you aid. High upon the face of these cliffs, hidden amongst the complex network of caves, the underground sanctity of the wise Oracle of Nosgoth lay sleeping. Perhaps it was time to brave the winds and seek out this Oracle from the vantage point of the heavens.
Hidden amidst the many obscure artifacts in that museum, I discovered an ancient chronicle. This passage caught my eye. It was during these dark times, infested with the plague of the undead, that the Circle brought the Seraphan to existence. Trained to be devoutly loyal to the Circle and the perfect exterminators of the undead Scourge, they were led to many victories by the righteous Paladin, Malek, protector of the Pillar of Conflict. They cleansed the vampires with fire and released their souls to more blessed realms. There is no wrath as terrible as that of the righteous. Odd. This armor resembled that of the ward and his minions, yet the steel seemed newly fashioned and untarnished by time. I recognize this crest from my youth. Tis the sigil of the mighty lion of Willendorf, bloodstained and rusted upon this battered shield. A nobleman, seeking wisdom. Death has taught you well. Enough philosophy, I seek answers. Answers, indeed. I have them all if you have the questions. And what are the questions for these answers? King Atmar, the only hope to defeat the legions of the Nemesis. King Atmar, paralyzed by his princess's malaise. King Atmar, the useless. Pray, good sir, what are the questions? A pox upon your tricks and babble, old man. Answer me this. Who is Malik, and how can I defeat him? All in time, Sirah. Yes, time. Unless you master it, it will master you. And now it's time for your answer. Malik, defender of the Nine and last of the Seraphim Sorcerer Priests. His vanity led to the slaughter of the Circle at the hands of the vampire Vorator. For his failing, his spirit was fused to a hellish set of magical armor. He has allowed no member of the Circle to fall since. What of this Vorador? Follow the glow of the Ignis Fatuous to the Termagant Forest. Ignis Fatuous? The Ignis Fatuous lights the path to hell, nobleman. Your path. Time, Kay. Next time. The Black Forest reigned here. Its kingdom rarely invaded by those that live in the light. But it was called home by this mysterious Vorador. Legend told of a time when Vorador defeated Malek of the Seraphan. If such a man did exist, then he could perhaps be the key to defeating the ward. The luxury with which this Vorador surrounded himself was impressive. His wealth would shame the haughty nobles of my former court. That this vulgar display of fortune remained undisturbed, was a testament of fear's dominion over greed. Their charms were almost visible through the gauze of their clothing, yet beauty such as theirs delivered only death. For these were Vorador's pets, nothing more than beasts, slave to his will and the easy prey he provided. Vampires, all of them, held in thrall by one stronger still. <laughs> Vorador's pantry. A vampire's feast. Like cattle awaiting slaughter, men and women dangled from the rusted hooks upon the dungeon walls. Blood and viscera frosted the dirt and stone. The abundance nearly overwhelmed me. For blood is the life. <laughs> the room I had entered had but one purpose the torture and execution of human beings for the sadistic pleasure of its engineer. Blood was splattered on every surface, coating the spikes that jutted from the walls and filming the stone floor. The dread and agony of victims past still echoed through the lethal walls. A symphony of terror and agony filled the air. Then, from amidst the cacophony of screaming souls came the perverse laughter of the vampire himself. 
Amongst Vorador's possessions, I found an ancient chronicle. Long ago, vampires grew in such number so as to capture the attention of the circle. The Order of the Saraphan, or the Angels of Light, as they were called, was instated to counter the menace. Thus, the Vampire Purge began. In the bowels of that black forest, I found something worse than hell. A vision of what I was becoming. It's not often I see one of our own, especially one as young and foolish as yourself. Nonetheless, drink. Drink deep and indulge your gift. Gift? <laughs> Vorado thought my curse a blessing. That we were gods. That mortals offered their blood as sacrifice so that we could enjoy our supernatural powers. And somewhere, deep inside my new self, I knew that he was right. That mortal dreams were prayers. Prayers to us begging us for power. I pondered this as the decadent old fool prattled on about his past. A boorish account of how he defeated Malek of the Seraphim and took his vengeance upon the Circle of Nine for supporting the Seraphim holy war to exterminate Malek! Feast on your corpses! After slaughtering six of the sheep, I defeated their pathetic little shepherd, Malik. Since then, our kind has not bothered with the cattle, except to feed. And I suggest you do the same. Meddling with the affairs of man can do us no good. Seraphan witch hunts are much too tedious to concern ourselves with. Am I understood, Cain? Good. Take this ring. If you ever need assistance, it will summon you. Despite your youthful arrogance, you amuse me, Kay. It would be such a pity to lose you to this. Now be gone! A triad congregates at the roof of the world, Cain. A plot to twist the land to shape the world. North is where your vengeance lies. Ah, not one, but three. Dejul the Energist, Bane the Druid, and Anacroth the Alchemist. How considerate of them to hasten my search. So the scourge of the circle has arrived. Fear him not, Bane. He is but a whelp. His soul is ours for the taking. Don't be ridiculous, Malak, to our aid. Ooh, damn you, alchemist. I had not come this far only to have my quarry escape. Vengeance. 
vengeance for my eternity of suffering. Welp! As if you knew what eternity was. Grovel before your true master! Never. I'll hack you from crotch to gizzard and feed what's left to your brides. Avernus consumed itself before my eyes. There seemed no easy path to gain entry to the hell laid out before me. Perhaps there was a way inside from above the chaos that reigned there. And Hashak Gix spoke unto the world, and all who heard trembled. Bring me your firstborn, and shed their blood upon the altar of the world, so that I may take nourishment from them. Do this without question, or suffer my wrath for eternity. And its will was done. Time fades even legend, and the origin of Soul Reaver has been lost long ago. But its purpose remains, to feed on the souls of any creature it strikes. Kindred, this blade and I. Above me stood a memory, etched in stained glass. to me, my children. We shall ravage Nazgoth together. <laughs> For all her magic, the Lady Azimuth was little trouble. Once her demonic thralls had been dispatched, she fell quickly to my blade. Well done. You have found Mobius's toy. Azimuth not content with summoning demonic thrall, stole the time-streaming device in order to gather creatures from other ages as well. Take care of the device, Cain. It will deliver you in time. The legions of the Nemesis are on the march from the north, crushing all in their path. T'was not too long ago that the Nemesis was known as William the Just, a caring and gentle benefactor of the land. But as his army grew in strength, and he himself grew in power, the veil of tyranny fell, and one kingdom was not enough. So many cities, so many dead. Willendorf will be sure to follow. The nemesis must be stopped, or all shall be lost. How can one stop an army? You must rally the forces of Willendorf. They are the last hope of Nosgoth. Willendorf, proud defender of the realm with its warrior elite and mighty ruler, King Ottmar. The Lion Throne had once held my allegiance, but Willendorf's days of glory had passed. It was the last bastion against an unruly future. The court of King Ottmar, shades of my former existence, proud and self-absorbed, surrounded by all the finery of the realm, secure in their ignorance. As I walked among them, I smirked, thinking of the carnage that would befall them at the hands of the legions of the Nemesis, the glorious flames, and the inevitable rape and pillage. Out of my way, peasant! 
The stench of the fields hangs over you like a pall. The king sees no one. He is in mourning for the princess. He'll be in mourning for his kingdom soon. And he'll mourn for you even sooner if you don't get out of my way. Woo! And so I won my audience, such as it was, with Otmar. He cared not for the invading armies from the north, only of the plight of his child. Her birthday present. To celebrate her birthday, I declared a contest. Whoever created the finest doll in the realm would be granted a royal favor. Hundreds of dolls were brought, but the winner was obvious. Elzevir the doll maker created a toy of such beauty that all were captivated by it. And all he would take in payment was a lock of her hair. Soon after, she became like this. A lifeless puppet. Whoever restores her to her former self shall have this kingdom! Thus, my hunt for the doll maker. Otmar slumped on his throne like a rag doll, his beard matted with tears of his own self-pity. In my court, he would have long since been usurped by one stronger, but in Willendorf, they worshipped him, even in his weakness. I wondered what Willendorf would do when Otmar's death finally arrived. The scourge of Nosgoth is upon us, friends! We shall die today as heroes, lest we live tomorrow as slaves! Ready thine arms! For Nosgoth! I sated my thirst on warriors of Horde and Hope alike, the dying relinquishing their final moments to give me strength. At once the battlefield was gone. Where the ground was caked with blood and dirt, there was lush greenery. Where chaos reigned only moments before, this damning calm prevailed. Alas, it seemed I was stranded here. The time-streaming device lay in pieces at my feet. Would you stand idle as vermin destroy your crops? No! Does your house burn? No! Will you allow this evil to continue? No! Will the wickedness end? In us! Do you believe? Yes! yes! Then take me to your king so that I can prepare you for the onslaught. Ah, yes, the vampire. Uh, Mobius told me you would come. <laughs> A time-streaming device. Strange. When coincidence seems too convenient, I prefer to call it fate.
With William the Just dead, Mobius's plans have been thwarted. His pawn was removed from the game. I found myself once more in the Nosgoth I knew. The carnage from battle was gone. Yet there was something amiss. From the distance, I heard cries, and a breeze from the south carried with it the faint odor of vampire blood. It would seem the folly fell upon my own shoulders. With their sainted King William dead by my hand, the people of the land were consumed by a hunger all their own for vampire blood. I make no pretense to justify my killing, yet these vampire hunters would cloak their bloodlust beneath a veil of righteousness. Hypocrites! They would make themselves judge and jury. Very well then, let us see how they take to my role as executioner. City was cleansed? No! no! Would you spare one wolf in the pack that has devastated your herd? No! no! Then let us destroy them all! Yes! He is the last! Destroy him! The people will not rest until Nosgoth is purged. Of your kind. I had been betrayed. In my haste, I had not realized it before. That sigil on his forehead, the Oracle of Nosgoth, was in fact the time streamer Mobius, and I had followed his advice. How much of my quest was of his design? Willendorf, the battle of the last stand, William the Just? Was this the trap he had fashioned for me? We will send you back to the grave whence you came, vampire. Ironic. By going back in time and altering the past, you turned William the Just into the nemesis. I, you have seen my plan, vampire, as I have seen your destiny. The future says you die. But I am dead. As are you. Mobius's hourglass was the focus of his time-streaming magic. Farewell, sorcerer. The sands of time have ceased to flow for you. Well done, Cain. <laughs> Mobius did so love playing the trickster's part. His guise as the Oracle served his schemes well. Pity with all his plots he failed to plan for you. Come to me, my undead son. Make haste to the pillars. The stage is set for the grand finale. You will have your vengeance. You betrayed us, Mortanius. You had Cain killed and turned him into a monster. You set him upon us. It had to be. Napraptor's insanity poisoned all of our minds. The Circle had failed in its sworn duties. It had to be destroyed. Failed our duties? Idiot! The Circle exists for us. We don't exist for it. Our powers will save or damn Nosgoth at our whim. Stand with us, Mortanius, or die. Then I shall die.
If the Circle is to be destroyed, you have to die as well, Necromancer. I admire your cunning, but you will not escape your fate. Nay, I will embrace it, but my death will leave one more to take Princeling. Finish me! <laughs> you thought yourself a king, when in fact you were a pawn. You have served me well, Cain. <laughs> I serve no one. Indeed, such narrow vision. Don't you see? My silencing of Ariel and its calculated repercussions is but the first act in my theater of ground in yours. Are the tragic hero. Play on, little vampire. Play on. Fay Victus! I am the last pillar. The only survivor of the Circle of Nine. At my whim, the world will be healed or damned. At my whim. Once I embraced my powers, I realized that Vorador was correct. We are gods. Dark gods, and it is our duty to thin the herd. <laughs> Cain is deified. The clans tell tales of him. Few know the truth. He was mortal once. As were we all. However, his contempt for humanity drove him to create me and my brethren. I am Raziel, firstborn of his lieutenants. I stood with Cain and my brethren at the dawn of the Empire. I have served him a millennium. Over time, we became less human and more... divine. Cain would enter the state of change and emerge with a new gift. Some years after the Master, our evolution would follow. Until I had the honor of surpassing my lord. Transgression. I earned a new kind of reward. There was only one possible outcome. Eternal damnation. I, Razio, was to suffer the fate of traitors and weaklings, to burn forever in the bowels of the Lake of the Dead. Cast him in. Tumbling, burning with white-hot fire, I plunged into the depths of the abyss. Unspeakable pain, relentless agony. Time ceased to exist. Only this torture and 
and a deepening hatred of the hypocrisy that damned me to this hell. An eternity passed, and my torment receded, bringing me back from the precipice of madness. The descent had destroyed me, and yet I lived. I know you, Razier. You are worthy. What madness is this? What pitiful form is this that I have come to inhabit? Death would be a release next to this travesty. You did not survive the abyss, Razier. I have only spared you from total dissolution. I would choose oblivion over this existence. The choice is not yours. I am destroyed. You are reborn. The birth of one of Cain's abominations traps the essence of life. It is this soul that animates the corpse you lived in. And that, Raziel, is the demise of Nazgoth. There is no balance. The souls of the dead remain trapped. I cannot spin them in the wheel of fate. They cannot complete their destinies. Redeem yourself. Or if you prefer, avenge yourself. Settle your dispute with Cain. Destroy him and your brethren. Free their souls and let the wheel of fate churn again. Use your hatred to reave their souls. I can make it possible. Become my soul reaver. My angel of death. You are weak. You must feed. The old hunger has left me. I have no desire for blood. You are changed. Your bloodthirst is replaced by a deeper need. You have become a devourer of souls. To sustain your strength, you must hunt the lost spirits of the underworld and consume the souls of your enemies. These portals are your conduit between the spectral and material realms. With their aid, you may gather matter and will yourself to become manifest in the physical world. This is taxing, however. Your strength must first be fully restored. You require no conduit to return to this plane. You may abandon your physical body at any time. Sustain your strength to prolong your manifestation in the physical world. If you fail to feed or absorb too many wounds, this fragile matter will dissolve. What are these creatures? Do you not recognize them? They are the children of your brother, Duma. That's impossible. These foul scuttling beasts could not be kin of our high blood. Do you suppose that time stood still for you, Raziel? Much has changed since you passed from the world of men. I knew my opponent's weaknesses, having suffered them myself. Physical wounds are fleeting. A vampire's immortal flesh begins to close as soon as it is cleaved. Vampires need only fear those wounds that impale or inflame. Water scorches like acid and fledglings are devastated by sunlight's touch. I would have to modify my tactics to suit my foes. My God! The Sanctuary of the Clans reduced to ruin. Beyond these walls lay the Pillars of Nosgoth, the seat of Cain's Empire. 
How humble it now appeared, collapsing into the dust of its former magnificence. And yet, I had only just emerged. In the instant between my execution and resurrection, centuries had apparently passed. This world is wrecked with cataclysms. The Earth strains to shrug off the pestilence of Cain's parasitic empire. The fate of this world was preordained in an instant by a solitary man. Unwilling to martyr himself to restore Nosgoth's balance, Cain condemned the world to the decay you see. In that moment, the unraveling began. Now it is nearly played out. Nosgoth teeters on the brink of collapse. Its fragile balance cannot hold. This, at least, had remained constant. The endlessly swirling vortex of the abyss. My tomb and the womb of my rebirth. Though much of Nosgoth's landscape had changed, these cliffs gave me my bearings. My clan territory was to the west. I was anxious to see how my descendants had fared during the centuries of my absence. Utter desolation. My once proud kin wiped from this world like excrement from a boot. I knew the hand that wrought this deed. This charnel house bore the unmistakable marks of Melchiah's clan. To what depths had our dynasty plummeted if these ghouls were the descendants of my high-born brother? Were they so debased as to recruit fledglings from the desiccated corpses here interred? My brother Melchiah was made last, and therefore received the poorest portion of Cain's gift. Although immortal, his soul could not sustain the flesh, which retained much of its previous human frailty. This weakness, it seemed, was passed on to his offspring. Their fragile skins barely contained the underlying decay. Show yourself, creature! Do you not recognize me, brother? Am I so changed? Melkaya? Yes, brother. You should have stayed where the Master sent you, Raziel. You will find Nosgoth less pleasant than you remember. What has become of my clan? Answer me, little brother, or I will beat an answer from your horrid lips. Everyone is afraid, sibling. You awake to a world of fear. These times of change are so... unsettling. Do you think I feel no revulsion for this form? Do you believe for a moment that our lord would risk his empire upon an upstart inheritance. Enough riddles. What are you saying? You are the last to die. Tell me, Melchiah, where can I find Cain? The master is beyond your reach, Raziel. He makes himself known when he sees fit, not when commanded.
You have done well, Raziel. Am I reduced to this? A ghoul? A fratricide? Elevated, Raziel. Not reduced. Consuming Melchiah's soul has endowed you with a new gift. Insubstantial barriers such as these are no impediment to you in the Spectral Realm. Will yourself to pass through, and you shall. Raziel. Cain! The Abyss has been unkind. I am your creation, Cain. Now, as before. You criticize your own work. What have you done with my clan, degenerate? You have no right! What I have made, I can also destroy, child. Damn you, Cain! You are not God! This act of genocide is unconscionable! Conscience? You dare to speak to me of conscience? Only when you have felt the full gravity of choice should you dare question my judgment. Your life span is a flicker compared to the mass of doubt and regret that I have borne since Mortanius first turned me from the light. To know that the fate of the world hangs dependent on the advisedness of my every deed? Can you even begin to conceive what action you would take in my position? I would choose integrity, Cain. <laughs> Look around you, Raziel. See what has become of our empire. Witness the end of an age. The clans scattered to the corners of Nosgoth. This place has outlasted its usefulness. As have you. The Soul Reaver. Cain's ancient blade. Older than any of us and a thousand times more deadly. The legends claimed that the blade was possessed and thrived by devouring the souls of its victims. For all our bravado, we knew what it meant when Cain drew the Soul Reaver in anger. It meant you were dead. The blade is vanquished, so it unfolds, and we are a step closer to our destinies. <laughs> I swore I saw a glint of satisfaction in Cain's eye when the Soul Reaver was destroyed. I did not understand the game that Cain was playing, but I knew the finishing move. From this moment and ever afterwards, you and this blade are inextricably bound. Soul Reaver and Reaver of Souls, your destinies are intertwined. By destroying the sword, you have liberated it from its corporeal prison and restored it to its true form, a wraith blade, its energy unbound. No longer a physical blade, it can only manifest itself in the material realm when your strength is fully restored. Once manifest, it will sustain you. What are you, little soul? Another of Cain's creatures come to taunt this bound spectre. I did not intend to disturb your rest. Rest. A body is needed for sleep, 
Flesh and bones are required to recline. No, child. All I may do is watch and remember, ceaselessly conscious as this wretched world's history unfurls. Ghastly past, insufferable future, are they one and the same? Am I always here? How have you come to haunt these pillars? Cain refused the sacrifice. The Pillar of Balance, corrupted to its core, stands as a monument to his blind ambition. Now these pillars serve only to bind me here, my prison and eternal home, thanks to the avarice of your master, Cain. That bastard can claim no allegiance from me. Then we share a common foe, Raziel. Return here when you have need. Ariel remembers what others have forgotten. Prodigal son, there is no returning for you, Raziel. Zephon, your visage becomes you. It's an appropriate reflection of your soul. And you are not his handsome Raziel anymore. His precious firstborn son turned betrayer. You have missed so many changes, little Raziel. Look around you. See how the human's weapon of destruction has become my home. Indeed, my body. A cocoon of brick and granite from which to watch a pupating world. A crevice in which to cower, only scuttling from the shadows to devour a victim already ensnared in your cowardly trap. But you've made the mistake of leaving me unbound, and it is you who must succumb to my will. Will! Instinct! Reflex action! The insect mind finds little difference. I warn you, brother. As my stature has grown, so it is matched by my appetite. Step forward, morsel! Consuming Zephon's apostate soul has bestowed on you a new gift. Like his vampire spawn, you are able to scale certain walls which are otherwise impassable, but only in the physical realm. In the spirit world, these insubstantial edifices will not support you. The ancient tomb of the Seraphim, once impenetrably sealed, now ravaged by Nosgoth's upheavals, its mysteries lay exposed. In the time of Vorador, centuries before Cain was made, the Seraphim warrior priests waged a merciless war against the vampire tribes of Nosgoth. Emboldened by righteousness, they committed unspeakable and indiscriminate acts of violence massacring fledglings and ancients alike. They decimated entire bloodlines in mere decades. Now their husks lay here, murderers enshrined. As I pulled the stone free, a sigh of sepulchral air escaped the inner chamber. I was not prepared for what lay beyond this threshold.
These crypts, defiled caskets of seraphim saints, bearing my brother's names and my own. The irony of Cain's blasphemous act rushed in on me with the crushing force of revelation. Were my hands not as bloody as these? Worse, I had spilled the blood of my brothers, these very comrades whose tombs lay ravaged before me. Yes, Raziel, you were a Seraphon, born of the same force that all but destroyed your race. Before the dawn of the Empire, you were chosen. Cain, Nosgoth's solitary self-declared monarch, plundered this tomb and raised you from these crypts. Breathing his vampiric gift into your defiled corpses, he resurrected you as his favored sons. Heretic, you shall not pass. Such loyalty to one who has you guarding this outpost like a chained dog. Do you prosper on the scraps he casts you? Your insults will do nothing to blunt the agonies of your demise. Cain killed me once. Behold the result. I have no more to fear from you. kinetic energy to strike objects that are otherwise beyond your reach. Rahab, you have adapted well to your environment, for one so maladjusted. Do not mock me, Raziel. You of all of us should respect the power bestowed by a limitation overcome. Cain said you would come. You speak with the murderer? You would do well to mind your blasphemous tongue. What more did he tell you? That you would destroy me. I will indeed. But tell me, before I tear your soul from its moorings, do you know what we were before Cain spawned us? Human. Seraphan Rahab, the antithesis of all we ever believed. Does it matter? We were lost. He saved us. Saved us? From what? From ourselves.
Infused with Rahab's soul, you have overcome your former vulnerability to water's touch. Immersion in water will no longer dissolve your physical body, enabling you to swim to areas heretofore beyond your reach. My brother Dumas, a powerful warrior in life. He would have burned with shame to have me find him here like a stuck pig. Unbound at last. I thank you, brother. Your thanks are premature, Duma. I have not forgotten whose hands bore me into the abyss. The centuries in limbo have honed my strength. Not even Cain is my equal. Even the strongest vampire is vulnerable. We shall test your thesis, Raziel. My bloodthirst has been superseded by an even darker hunger. I will consume your soul before this day is done. Consuming Duma's soul empowers you to wind a constricting band of spectral energy around your enemies. This energy manifests itself in both the spectral and material realms, and in the physical world, it can be employed to manipulate otherwise immovable objects. The Oracle's Cave, where Cain's first fateful meeting with Mobius occurred. Mobius played the role of a doddering soothsayer, stirring his pot of visions while dispensing enigmatic predictions to gullible visitors. Underneath the facade was Mobius the Time Streamer, sorcerer of the Circle of Nine, a ruthless manipulator with the power to bend time. Since his murder at Cain's hand centuries ago, these caves have stood vacant, though, like Mobius himself, they are rumored to be only a facade for a much larger, more elaborate complex. I sensed that Cain was here, and at that moment, I would have plumbed the depths of hell to find him. This, I deduced, must be the man himself. The time streamer, Mobius. He seemed not at all the impressive figure I had imagined from Cain's boasted exploits. And yet, even this cold image radiated a certain undeniable power. My arrival in this miserable age. What trickery is this? It is no illusion, Raziel. 
but a glimpse into the currents of time itself. These apparitions torment me. Has this all been foretold? Impossible! This must be one of Cain's deceptions. My mind reels with conflict. Does Cain await me moments from now? or in some century yet to come. This cannot be. What madness does this scene portend? Cain must think me credulous to suffer these lies. Is this phantasm a conjuration of my mind, or an echo of future events? I must say I'm disappointed in your progress. I imagined you'd be here sooner. Tell me, did it trouble you to murder your brothers? Did it trouble you when you ordered me into the abyss? No. I had faith in you. In your ability to hate. In your self-righteous indignation. Lies. You cannot have foreseen all of this. Eternity is relentless, Raziel. When I first stole into this chamber centuries ago, I did not fathom the true power of knowledge. To know the future, Raziel. To see its paths and streams tracing out into the infinite. As a man, I could never have contained such forbidden truths. But each of us is so much more than we once were. Gazing out across the plains of possibility, do you not feel, with all your soul, how we have become like gods? And as such, are we not indivisible? As long as a single one of us stands, we are legion. And that is why, when I must sacrifice my children to the void, I can do so with a clear heart. Very poetic, Cain. But in the end, you offer no more than a convenient rationalization for your crimes. These chambers offer insight for those patient enough to look. In your haste to find me, perhaps you have not gazed deeply enough. Our futures are predestined. Mobius foretold mine a millennium ago. We each play out the parts fate has written for us. We are compelled ineluctably down preordained paths. Free will is an illusion. I have been to the tomb of Seraphan Cain. Your dirty secret is exposed. How could you transform a Seraphan priest into a vampire?
How could I not? One must keep his friends close, Raziel, and his enemies even closer. Can you grasp the absurd beauty of the paradox? We are the same. Seraphan and Vampire. With our holy wars, our obsession with Nosgoth domination, who better to serve me than those whose passion transcends all notions of good and evil? I will not applaud your clever blasphemy. The Seraphan were saviors, defending Nosgoth from the corruption that we represent. My eyes are opened, Cain. I find no nobility in the unlife you rudely forced on my unwilling corpse. You may have uncovered your past, but you know nothing of it. You think the Seraphan were noble? Altruistic? <laughs> Don't be simple. Their agenda was the same as ours. You are lost in a maze of moral relativism, Cain. These apparitions and portents. What game are you playing now? Destiny is a game, is it not? And now, you await my latest move. You nearly had me, Raziel. But this is not where or how. Fate promises more twists before this drama unfolds. Completely. and destroyer, pawn and messiah. Welcome, time span soul. Welcome to your destiny. Where am I? Is the usual question. In your case, when might be more apt. Very well, you old snake. If you'd prefer I use my bare hands. Well, this is completely unexpected. This orb disables our vampire enemies, leaving them helpless and incapacitated. Strangely, it seems to have the same effect on that peculiar weapon of yours. But you must believe me. I mean you no harm. You can drop the benevolent facade, Mobius. I know who and what you are. I should kill you where you stand. <laughs> Perhaps you should, my boy. But you don't. Are you so certain of that, Mobius? My role as Time Guardian affords me a certain level of... Omniscience, Raziel? No, you don't kill me. That honor belongs to your maker, Cain, some 30 years from now. Ah, you two are a pair. You're just as fatalistic as he is. Death comes for us all, Raziel. It's just a matter of time. How is it that you know my name? We have never met. On the contrary, Raziel. I know you very well, and it grieves me to see how cruelly Cain has used you. I knew you when you were one of the Seraphan Brotherhood, Raziel. We were even close. Oh, please. Fortunately, you need not love me now to be my ally. Are we within the stronghold of the Seraphan Priesthood? Yes, but the glorious days of the Seraphan have long since passed. I'm afraid. This is a more cynical and indecorous age. 
My mercenary army now inhabits this stronghold. We strive to honor the memory of the Seraphan with our own humble crusade. Is this the vampire Vorador? Yes. The scourge of the circle. The most depraved and decadent example of his whole degenerate race. He slaughtered six of my fellow guardians as they cowered defenseless in this room. And you somehow survived this massacre? I and two others. The circle was devastated. Only we three were spared. How convenient. You'll forgive me if I don't naively devour every scrap of information you toss me. You have a reputation for deceit. And who has slandered me, sir? Your malefactor, Cain? The one who betrayed and destroyed you? Our common enemy? Consider the source before you judge me too harshly. We'll forget about rekindling our old friendship then. But consider an alliance based on our common ground. We both want Cain dead. I can help you do it. You don't want to meddle in this old man. I know all about your sordid little schemes, but you're simply out of your depth on this one. You underestimate me, Raziel. Let me show you. Even now, Cain is lying in wait for you, unaware that I've snatched you out of the time stream and brought you here to me. See how he lingers at the very pillars he is destined to destroy, foolishly confident that he has eluded your grasp. The pillars are still standing in this time. Yes, Raziel. They are the embodiment of the divine force which preserves the life of our world. We who serve the pillars maintain their delicate balance, and Cain is destined to be the fulcrum upon which that balance turns. I believe you have already endured the wasteland wrought by his terrible, selfish decision. Cain's very existence is a cancer upon this world. As long as he lives, all of Nosgoth is in peril. You may never again be human, Raziel. But you can re-embrace the essence of your humanity and the nobility of your Seraphim heritage. Go to him, Raziel, and end this. But first, you will need to find your way out of the stronghold, and in this, I'm afraid I cannot help you. My soldiers will not understand your appearance here. They will try to kill you. You needn't fear them, of course. They're no match for you. Try to keep the casualties to a minimum. But do what you have to do. All great movements require a few martyrs. Alone now, I surveyed my surroundings and noticed a second time-streaming chamber, its entrance identical to the first, but with one distinction. That crystal was significant, but how, I had not yet discovered. Throughout the stronghold, I discovered evidence of my former nobility and my life as a Seraphan priest. This was the heritage so foully stolen from me when Cain raided my sacred crypt and defiled me. Away from the influence of Mobius's cursed staff, I could feel the strength of the Soul Reaver slowly returning. If that orb was as debilitating to vampires as it was to the blade, it gave Mobius a powerful advantage over his enemies. I finally understood how Mobius's crusade could decimate the vampires so successfully. If he could immobilize his enemies, they were at his mercy. But why, I wondered, would the staff have any effect on the reaver? As I neared the stronghold's inner sanctum, a strange sensation crept over me. An indescribable feeling of displacement, a sense of vertigo, as reality itself appeared to warp and bend around me. 
The disturbance seemed to emanate from the sanctuary's furthest chapel. As I cautiously approached, the sense of dislocation intensified with each step. So this was the tomb of the beloved King William the Just, beatified here as the martyr and catalyst of Mobius's crusade. I was reminded of Cain's journey as a fledgling vampire, how Mobius coerced him to travel back in history and assassinate William, thus igniting a genocidal hatred of vampires among the citizens of Nosgoth. And here I discovered the source of the displacement, the Soul Reaver itself, laid out like a holy relic, and broken, apparently in the battle between William and Cain. I had not thought such a thing was possible. Until, of course, Cain shattered the blade against me when he tried to strike me down. Thus, the captive spirit inhabiting the Reaver was released, and binding itself to me, became my symbiotic weapon. And so the Reaver met its former self, still imprisoned in this corporeal shell. I watched, mesmerized, as the Wraith Blade uncoiled itself and snaked down the length of the physical blade. Embracing its twin, its mirror self, the Reaver's long dormant spirit was now fully aroused. And for the first time, I felt the true presence of this other entity, willful, ravenous, and deranged from thousands of years of imprisonment. The Reaver was now in command, and I, now merely its helpless host, felt my soul being leeched to restore the blade. But the Reaver knew better than to destroy its host, and just as I neared the brink of oblivion, the blade released its hold on me. As I recovered, I realized we were now bound together in a fragile alliance, the Reaver no longer merely my symbiotic weapon, but a sentient parasite competing for control. What have you done to me, Mobius? Is this your trap? How mine? Don't forget it was Cain who led you here, not I. While you curse me, the only soul in Nosgoth ready to guide and assist you, Cain laughs at our folly and revels in your dismay. These blades, now coiled in sinister embrace, have inspired terror in the hearts of creatures far more durable than you, old man. Bound together as they are, I can only imagine what they could do to your soul's fragile shell. Raziel, I beg you to stay your hand. This was none of my doing. I have sought only to aid you in your righteous quest. Why, you're trembling, Mobius. Has your confidence abandoned you? You seem to have made a fatal error by leaving your precious staff behind. Is that where all your courage comes from? Listen to me, Raziel. You don't know what you're doing. I have taken an enormous risk by appearing here before you, so defenseless, yet eager to prove my good intentions. If there's anything left of the Seraphim in you, you won't do this. While you threaten me, your true enemy eludes you. Don't concern yourself with Cain, old man. He'll join you in hell soon enough. As you said, death comes for us all. Yes, the wheel of fate demands it. What did you say? The wheel of fate, the inexorable cycle of death and rebirth to which all men are compelled. We serve the same God, Raziel. To strike me down would be striking God's own attendant. And I don't believe even you would take that risk. Tire of your games, Mobius. Now that I know you fear me, I needn't concern myself with you. Cain is waiting for me. Go then, Raziel. Seek Cain out and destroy him in the name of the one god we both serve. You, who were once a seraphim priest, murdered, profaned, destroyed, and reborn again from his mercy. You are now most powerfully equipped to be his agent. 
His instrument of restoration and retribution. My own vengeance is motivation enough. By my soul, you almost had me, my little blue assassin. But that'll be the one and only chance you get. I assure you of that. I could now summon the blade at will, regardless of my strength. But once summoned, the blade's ravenous appetite could not be contained. It devoured the souls of its victims. And if I allowed it to become over-aroused, the Reaver would now turn its hunger on me. Strange how my history came full circle. This chapel, I realized, was a memorial to my former Saraphan brethren and myself. All of us martyred here, and then so cruelly profaned by Cain when he imposed his gift on our noble corpses. For the first time, I beheld the image of my Saraphan self, memorialized here among my fallen comrades. It tortured me to see how noble and pure I had been, and what a vile phantasm I had become, and a profound sense of injury, of loss and betrayal, welled up in me, so overwhelming I could barely contain it. All I wanted at this moment was to find Cain and destroy him. I emerged, and for the first time beheld Nosgoth in its former glory. The land overflowed with a abundant life and vitality, and I knew with certainty then that the world I had left behind was nothing more than the corpse of Nosgoth, a lifeless husk bled dry by the corruption of Cain's parasitic empire. This was the fragile world Cain sacrificed to preserve his own petty life and ambition, heedless of the profound cost. The sight only deepened my resolve. I sensed that the pillars lay to the northwest. If Cain truly waited to confront me there, I would not disappoint him. These vampires had nothing in common with the deranged jackals I left behind in Cain's derelict empire. They seemed to retain much of their former humanity. In this era, vampires were clearly not the uncontested predators we had been. These creatures were hunted mercilessly and oppressed. And while I still believed that vampirism was a plague and had to be wiped out, there was nothing noble or righteous in this crusade. This was simply ruthless persecution. The Pillars of Nosgoth. Pristine. Whole and uncorrupted. I had never beheld them in this undefiled state, yet something profound and indelible resonated within me at the sight. And there, waiting at the very heart of the pillars, was the canker that was destined to destroy them. I know you're there, Raziel. Mobius led me to you, Cain, though I might have guessed you'd meet me here. <laughs> and if Mobius told you I was hidden on the underside of hell, would you throw yourself into oblivion to pursue me? Mobius trawls for the ignorant and unwary, hauling his gasping prey from the streams of their destinies. Stay out of his net, Raziel. Spare me your elaborate metaphors, Cain. I have pursued you here for one purpose. You will pay for your betrayal, and balance will thus be restored to Nosgoth. And whose will is satisfied then? The will of Raziel or Mobius? Would I be better manipulated by you, Cain? Now, turn and face me. 
The chase is over. This isn't a chase, Raziel. We are merely passengers on the wheel of destiny, describing a perfect circle to this point. We've been brought here for a reason. I've seen the beginning and the end of our story, however, and the tale is crude and ill-conceived. We must rewrite the ending of it. You and I. Face me, Cain. Even you shouldn't die a coward's death. Isn't it customary to grant the condemned a final request? I recall no such courtesy from you. Indulge me, Raziel. All I ask is that you listen. This is the sublime moment of our undoing, Raziel. The ineffable fulcrum upon which swings the entirety of our history. This is where all of Nosgoth is betrayed. In this instant, Ariel, the balanced guardian, is murdered by dark forces bent on overthrowing the pillars. Her spirit is just now tearing free, lost in the ether, trying to find its way here. You have already seen how she comes to haunt these pillars. Bound here by your refusal to die, you are the reason this land becomes diseased. As long as you remain alive, you condemn Nosgoth to an eternity of decay. Be still, Raziel. See this. As Ariel dies, I am being born to take her place as Balance Guardian. Such is my destiny. My God. At the moment of my first cry, Ariel's beloved, the Guardian Nup Raptor, finds her corpse. Racked with grief and tormented by suspicions of treachery, Nup Raptor plunges into a madness which overflows and infects all of the Guardians who are symbiotically bound, including me. The repercussions of Ariel's assassination were expertly calculated. The entire circle descends into madness, and I am tainted at the moment of my birth, instantly rendered incapable of fulfilling the role destiny has prepared for me. Shall I show you the same mercy you showed the rest of the circle, then? You blithely murdered them to restore their pillars, yet your hand faltered when it came to the final sacrifice. What makes you exempt, Cain? You're merely the last man standing. Why condemn me for simply carrying out what you hadn't the courage to do yourself? Let's drop the moral posturing, shall we? We both know there's no altruism in this pursuit. Your reckless indignation led you here. I counted on it. There's no shame in it, Raziel. Revenge is motivation enough. At least it's honest. Hate me, but do it honestly. Thirty years hence, I am presented with a dilemma. Let's call it a two-sided coin. If the coin falls one way, I sacrifice myself and thus restore the pillars. But as the last surviving vampire in Nosgoth, this would mean the annihilation of our species. Mobius made sure of that. If the coin lands on the reverse, I refuse the sacrifice and thus doom the pillars to an eternity of collapse. Either way, the game is rigged. We agree, then, that the pillars are crucial and must be restored. Yes, Raziel. And that's why we've come full circle to this place. So after all this, you make my case for me. To end this stalemate, you must die so that new guardians can be born. The pillars don't belong to them, Raziel. They belong to us. Your arrogance is boundless, Cain. <laughs> There's a third option. A monumental secret hidden in your very presence here. But it's a secret you have to discover for yourself. Unearth your destiny, Raziel. It's all laid out for you here. You said it yourself, Cain. There are only two sides to your coin. Apparently so. But suppose you throw a coin enough times. Suppose one day it lands on its edge.
I didn't know what impulse stayed my hand, why I had so willingly allowed Cain to escape me when I had pursued him for so long. I had no reason to trust Cain after he had valued me so little, and yet I found myself intrigued by his words. I had been too cruelly used to so gullibly play his pawn, but if this world truly had secrets to divulge, I was determined to expose them. From the moment of my arrival, I had the constant and palpable sensation of being watched. Someone, it seemed, was keenly interested in my presence here. From the look of it, this door had been sealed for centuries. I began to realize it was no mere coincidence that I found myself standing here, beneath this winged figure with blue skin and cloven hands so like my own and bearing this unique key. And so it was with a sense of gravity and trepidation that I unsealed that ancient door and crossed the threshold. As I entered the chamber, I sensed that it had been sealed for hundreds, perhaps thousands of years. And while this room was clearly built when the pillars were erected, I knew that no human hand could have shaped this place, and that perhaps it had never been seen by human eyes. The surrounding murals depicted a winged race, their features so like my own, but beautiful, where mine were grotesque, and angelic, while mine were demonic. I tried to decipher these images. A great war, but with combatants like none I had ever seen. The pillars, raised by this winged race, who thus defeated their adversaries. The winged beings again, writhing in agony, apparently afflicted with the same bloodthirst I had so recently suffered. And throughout the chamber, inscribed everywhere, images of the Reaver itself. Was this what Cain had urged me to discover? I wondered. Lies, Raziel. Do not be deceived. Ah, my ancient benefactor. And I dared to hope we had parted ways forever. Your silence was refreshing while it lasted. No doubt you have a conveniently inexpressible reason for your presence here. Do not be insolent, Raziel. I am eternally present here and everywhere, now and always. I am the still center of the turning wheel, the hub of this world's destiny. But perhaps not so omnipotent as you'd have me believe. Your hold on me appears to be tenuous. I no longer seem to need you. Yet I'm guessing you still need me. This impudence is unworthy of you, Raziel. Do not forget that you have a task to fulfill here. You are indebted to me. Indebted? You would have me show gratitude for a gift I didn't ask to be bestowed. Do you forget that you forced me to inhabit this vile carcass? I restored you to yourself, Raziel. It was Cain who destroyed you. The very enemy you've just let slip through your grasp. Do not fail me, my servant. I serve no one. Not you, not Cain, and not your lackey Mobius. Mobius is my good servant. I have many. And if I tell Mobius that he's worshipping a giant squid, do you think his faith will falter? You have grown willful, Raziel. But beware. To embrace a serpent is to invite poison into your heart. Cain is a sinuous beast. He will seduce and deceive you. You pride yourself on your free will, yet you let that degenerate deter your resolve.
I harbor no illusions about his integrity, nor anyone else's. In fact, I am beset by manipulation on all sides. I merely seek the truth. These are the fathomless truths, Raziel. The agony of birth and death and rebirth? This is the wheel of fate, the purifying cycle which sustains all life. Vampires are an abomination, a plague which leeches this land of its spiritual strength. They obstruct the flow of life and death. Their souls stagnate in their wretched corpses. But the wheel must turn. Death is inexorable and cannot be denied. Your destiny is irresistible, Raziel. You are my soul reaver, the scourge of the vampires, reaper of their apostate souls. Remain steadfast, end the vampire's parasitic curse, and restore Nazgoth. Cain's blood belongs on your hands. Cain indeed deserves to die for condemning me to this repugnant form, but if and when I kill him, it will be for me alone to decide. Cain destroyed you without a flicker of remorse. He tore the soul from your noble corpse, and after you had served him faithfully for a thousand years, he discarded you in the abyss on a jealous whim. Remember your rage, Raziel. Let it guide your hand. I surfaced into a very different landscape. The daylight barely penetrated the dense canopy of this forest. Here I discovered an ancient ruin, unmistakably one of Mobius's time-streaming chambers, but long ago sealed and abandoned to the encroaching swamp. I didn't currently possess the means to break this seal, but I thought in time that I might. So, my lurking observer was exposed. The creature vanished when he realized he was discovered. But I caught a glimpse of him, and his features were distinctive enough. This was the vampire Vorador, the monstrous assassin depicted in the stronghold. Strange that a creature brazen enough to assault the Circle single-handedly would avoid confronting me. Very well. If Vorador would not come to me, I would go to him. My lurking friend was nowhere to be seen, but I found these ruins even more intriguing. I recognized these arcane symbols from the chamber beneath the pillars, and realized that this shrine, too, was sealed to all but the bearer of the reaver. Throughout this ancient shrine, murals depicted the winged race and the apocalyptic war against their mysterious and equally inhuman adversaries. These winged beings, it seemed, were not only the architects of the pillars, but of this enigmatic place as well. And just as in the pillars' chamber, this shrine was adorned throughout with imagery of the reaver, depicted with the reverence of a holy icon. Concentric circles, one eclipsing the other. I recognized this symbol from the door sealing that other ancient shrine, the one I had seen in the lake, outside the Saraphan stronghold. Perhaps now, armed as I was with the elemental power of darkness, I could return and gain entry. You're a 
ragged excuse for a savior? Vorador. I see my reputation precedes me. It does. All good, I hope? I've been watching you since you emerged from that accursed stronghold. Strange that your arrival coincides with the corruption of the pillars. But I'm wondering, are you the catalyst of these events? Or the answer to them? I don't know what you mean. I will speak plainly, then. I distrust your origins, stranger. Seeing you crawl from the putrid depths of Mobius's keep makes me question your purpose here. And what should I make of your appearance? Not human, clearly, and more demon than vampire. And the pillars. It is no mere coincidence that your arrival in that clearing heralded the pillars' decay. And so I ask you plainly, are you the instrument of the pillars' destruction or their salvation? Neither. Very well. Let us look at the other side of the coin. I have followed your journey and watched as you've blithely unlocked secrets that have been sealed and forbidden for thousands of years. The path you have been treading is open to only one being. You don't know what you are, do you? I have been many things. If you find me ignorant, enlighten me. <laughs> What's the point? This world is beyond redemption. Let the human cattle have it. I would expect better than meek capitulation from you. Centuries of persecution have taught me well. Five hundred years ago, our race was nearly exterminated by the fanatical crusades of the Seraphan. And now the same sick drama unfolds again. In merely a decade, Mobius's cutthroat citizen army has nearly accomplished what the Seraphan could not. Vampires meddling in the affairs of men. Look where it's brought us. What am I to make of these secrets I've uncovered, then? The depictions of the winged race, the pillars, and the reaver. Fairy tales, boy. The delusions of an ancient culture clinging to hope long after the world had discarded them. Their bloodline trickled away, until only one of the ancients remained, sustained solely by obligation and his unfaltering faith in the old prophecies. But you see, even if you are who you appear to be, it no longer matters. You're simply too late. Janos Audrin, the Reaver Guardian, the last of the Ancients, and my Maker, was murdered by the Seraphan nearly five centuries ago. He alone would have the answers you seek, but his secrets died with him. I don't know how you've come even this far without his guidance, or without the Reaver. Stolen these five hundred years ago by the Seraphan. I'm afraid, my friend, that you and all of us are out of luck. I had no less reason to trust Vorador than anyone else I had met. In fact, the ancient vampire was the most forthright being I had encountered thus far. If Janos Audrin was the key to all this, then I would find him, and Mobius's time-streaming device would provide me passage. But first, I had to find a way back into the stronghold, and I suspected I would find the means within the lake's mysterious shrine. Ah, my wayward child returns. Having unearthed more than you'd like, I suspect. What am I to make of these ruins that litter the land, and these images here in this chamber? Merely the deceits of a failed civilization. You are being misled, Raziel. This ancient race hoped to manipulate the future with these scrawled misdirections. You must tread carefully. 
There are dark forces at work in this world, bent on subverting your true destiny. I have no doubt of that. The question is, am I in their presence right now? Your arrogance will spell your demise, Raziel. Deny my will, and the arc of your destiny will reach a sudden conclusion. Your threats are unmoving. Even now, I'm beyond your reach. My reach is longer than you realize. This is a very dangerous game you're playing, Raziel. These murals left no room for doubt. These winged creatures were indeed the architects of the pillars. And while the images were difficult to decipher, the pillars appeared to banish or diminish their enemies somehow. Show yourself, Cain. Here, Raziel. Everything is decided here. You cannot comprehend the magnitude, the rapture and the tragedy of this moment. And yet you must, if Nosgoth is to be dragged from the wreckage of its damnation. I understand only this, Cain. That you and Mobius have impelled me to this moment simply means I can trust neither of you. I don't know who's pulling the strings, but it no longer matters, because I'm cutting them. I set my own course from here. If it were only that simple. Your fatalism is tiresome, Cain. And profoundly ingrained, Raziel. You must understand, our presence here doesn't alter history. You and I meet here because we are compelled. We have always met here. History is irredeemable. Drop a stone into a rushing river. The current simply courses around it and flows on as if the obstruction were never there. You and I are pebbles, Raziel, and have even less hope of disrupting the time stream. The continuum of history is simply too strong, too resilient. Except... Then how do we explain William here? The beloved boy king turned tyrant. In my youth, I witnessed William's rise to power and his transformation into the nemesis who laid waste to Nosgoth. Keep your distance, Cain. Years later, I stumble upon a chance to journey back in history, unaware that the entire affair has been carefully orchestrated by Mobius. In my wisdom, I seize this opportunity to murder the young king before he can ravage Nosgoth, and thereby provide the catalyst Mobius needs to ignite a genocidal war against our race. I warn you, no further. This one reckless act unravels the skein of history. The nemesis never becomes the nemesis. William dies a martyred saint. I, the vampire assassin, become the author of my own species' extinction, and Mobius profits from it all. I destroyed a tyrant only to create one far worse. But how can it be so? How, if history is immutable? The answer is here in this room, Raziel. Mobius propelled William and me together, but ensured first that we were both armed with the Soul Reaver. The Reaver is the key. Two incarnations of the Blade meet in time and space. A paradox is created, a temporal distortion powerful enough to derail history. Is this your sorcery? Not mine, Raziel. Yours. You have nothing to fear from me, Raziel. You 
Hold all of the cards. Then perhaps I should test your sincerity. If what you say is true, you should be terrified. I could kill you here and now. And so you do, Razia. What's happening? We're hurtling towards our destinies, Raziel. What you feel is the pull of history rushing to meet us. This is where history and destiny collide. If you truly believe in free will, Raziel, now is the time to prove it. Kill me now, and we both become pawns of history, dragged down the path of an artificial destiny. I was ordained to assume the role of Balance Guardian in Nosgoth, while you were destined to be its savior. But the map of my fate was redrawn by Mobius, and so in turn was yours. This is madness! Fight it, Raziel. This moment does not have to be an ending. It can become a prelude. I can't! You can, Raziel. Look inside, and see that it is so. You have the power to reshape our inevitable futures. your monumental decision. This is where we restore ourselves, Raziel, and reclaim our intended destinies. It may yet be possible for me to assume my role as Balance Guardian and return the Pillars to their rightful inheritors. To the vampires. And this is the destiny you have urged me to discover. I don't know what game you and Mobius are playing, Kane, but I refuse to be your pawn. Unlike you, I still revere whatever shred of humanity I've managed to preserve. You will not use me as the instrument of your messianic delusions. Very well, Raziel. I'll not ask you to trust me. Your truths are for you to discover alone. <laughs> Humble words for one who presumes to teach me a lesson at every turn. And continue your journey and learn your own lessons, Raziel. Remember, Mobius led you here, but you walk away unfettered. A champion of free will and conqueror of false histories. There is much more for you to unearth, if you have the heart for the truth and the will to see it. Yes, I like that look on your face, Mobius. You really don't know what to do now, do you, old man? Here you are, caught without your damn staff. And I suspect things aren't progressing quite as you'd hoped. You're not used to the fly turning to confront you in your web, are you? Cain's devious influence has poisoned your mind, Raziel. Now you see betrayal everywhere, even in your closest allies. We were never allies, Mobius. Conspirators, perhaps. Briefly. Why did you not kill Cain when you had the chance? He was at your mercy. Precisely. I had a choice. And I chose mercy. And now I know your sordid little secret. The significance of that displacement I felt when the two Reavers came together. Strangely enough, I was enlightened by the devious Cain, not by you. In fact, I've learned much more than you counted on. I understand now how you've tried to manipulate all of history for your own personal gain. But now all your little schemes are whirling in ruin around you, aren't they? 
All because I chose to exert my will for once, rather than obey the demands of sorcerers and spirits and demons, all singing the same tiresome refrain, Kill Cain! I'm setting my own path from here, Mobius. I intend to discover the truth behind all of this. But you condemn us all with this impetuous act. Hardly impetuous. It took all the will I could muster. Has my refusal to kill Cain reshuffled your carefully stacked deck of cards? You really think that you're exercising your free will, Raziel? You're simply Cain's servant. I do not serve Cain. I merely did not kill him. Raziel, do not forget your purpose here. You are destined to be the savior of Nosgoth. Oh, I'm sick of hearing that particular phrase. As for saving Nosgoth, so far I see precious little reason to bother. And I'll choose my own purpose from here on out, time streamer. Right now, I choose to manipulate you for a change. Go. In there. What are you doing? Come, Mobius. You're a cunning serpent. You'll piece it together, I imagine. This error is of no further use to me. You will operate this device to provide me passage. I want to see the world in a simpler time, before the Saraphan began their crusade. And what about Cain? You're leaving your quarry behind. You kill him if it's so damned important. You need only touch the two poles of the switch, and the device will transport you. But I urge you to reconsider. You've lost your powers of persuasion, old man. Rot here and forget me. Even as I emerged from that infernal time-streaming chamber, I suspected treachery. The stronghold was vacant, derelict, abandoned. If I had any doubts about the error I now occupied, this grotesque tableau certainly eliminated them. For here was Mobius, long since murdered by Cain, lionized and beatified as the martyred leader of his bloodthirsty crusade. And if I required further evidence, I needed only to behold the gruesome trophy Mobius held aloft. The severed head of Vorador. The final triumphant kill of Mobius's cutthroat mob. His execution marked the annihilation of the vampires. Far from channeling me into Nosgoth's past, Mobius had propelled me over a century into its ghastly future. The intent behind this little detour was unmistakable. Having failed to make me his obedient assassin, Mobius intended to keep me ignorant of my true destiny, which clearly lay in Nosgoth's past. While his deception only reinforced my purpose, Mobius had effectively stranded me here. This left me no course but to explore the era I now occupied and see what changes the century had wrought following Cain's ill-fated decision. Perhaps time had cleared a path for me into the mountains, where I might unearth more clues behind the mystery of Janos Audron. <laughs> Raziel. 
What pathetic charade is this now, Mobius? No charade, Razia. Only the entreaties of this martyred spirit. Your pleas mean nothing to me after all your deceit. You have propelled me into Nosgoth's future, Mobius, and left me stranded here. I am truly sorry, Raziel, but it was necessary. Consider it the last valiant act of a doomed man. You have strayed from your purpose, and now behold the result. Gaze upon the wasteland you and Cain offered together. I fail to see how I'm responsible. You spared Cain, and by doing so, you have released a multitude of horrors upon this world. I can accept that Cain has murdered me, Razia. As the Time Guardian, I foresaw that incident long before it occurred, and I take some small comfort in the fact that Cain remains the sole survivor of his vile breed. But you have single-handedly made my sacrifice meaningless. Your argument is disingenuous, Time Streamer. I cannot see how killing or sparing Cain's future self would alter these events. This wasteland was created by Cain's original refusal at the Pillars. And amidst all these twists and turns, that event has never changed. You are coming, Lucas. I think you've gotten tangled in your own way. As Cain clings to his precious seat of power, the pillars sink into a mire of decay, dragging all of Nosgoth down with them. I don't think this has anything to do with the pillars or Cain's failure to sacrifice himself. I think you're simply afraid because you don't know what he's up to. He's a wild card, isn't he? And you don't want his influence in your game. Which is why you wanted me to eliminate him. Well, now that he survived, you have no idea what's coming, do you? Maybe, for the first time in your entire life, you're terrified that he may have truly found a third option out of the dilemma you orchestrated for him. Cain's lies have addled your mind. Leave this place! and trouble my spirit no more. If you even are a spirit, you've forgotten. I have a way to tell for sure. If you're willing to risk it. I didn't think so. Either way, you lose. These were the pillars so familiar to my blighted eyes. But now that I had begun to learn their true significance, I regarded the pillars' destruction with a new, enlightened sense of horror. And I questioned now whether Cain's simple refusal, his mere ambition, could truly have caused such devastation. I felt that some darker influence was at work here. As I approached, I discerned the spirit of Ariel, bound here now for more than a century. Forever am I bound, hope abandoned, my spirit tethered to this place. What destroyed the circle could not touch me, for I was newly dead and beyond harm's reach. I alone was spared the descent into madness, and Cain alone was spared the pain of death. When Nepraptor's poison seized Cain even in the safety of the womb, much more than just his destiny was lost. All of Nosgoth lost balance. Consider us now, both of us less than we once were. I, pure but insubstantial, and Cain terribly real, but corrupted. Your imprisonment here has deranged your spirit. You fixate on Cain because you believe he is the tether that binds you here. But we both know he is not the author of your agony. 
The pillars were subverted by dark forces, invited by the Guardians themselves. The more I learn of your circle, the more I see a tangle of nested manipulations. Cain handed them their victory. They sought to topple the pillars, and he was their willing instrument. Or was he their unwilling pawn? Would it blunt your wrath to know that Cain's dilemma was calculated to bring the pillars down, regardless of the choice he made? And that the devastation would have been even greater had he chosen the path you would prescribe for him? Oh, you are a subtle, deceitful creature. But your clever arguments do not absolve Cain. He must die for the pillars to be restored. There is no other way. Then consider this more ominous possibility. What if Cain's death does not restore the pillars? Consider that it may simply be too late, that this world may be beyond redemption, and that you may be bound here eternally. Do you hound me, demon? You can see that I am captive here. Show me some mercy. Like the mercy you showed your fellow guardians when you set Cain on them? Or the mercy you showed Cain when you kept him ignorant of his destiny while you used him as the scourge of the circle? Or perhaps like the mercy you showed your beloved Napraptor when you made him Cain's first kill? You are cruel. Why do you torment me? I'm merely looking for answers, Ariel. Ah, oh, very well. I'll leave you in peace. But know this about you and this purgatory from which you long to escape. You're merely at the threshold. Raziel, the failed assassin. You had Cain at your mercy, but lacked the courage to fulfill the act. And now you see the wasteland wrought by the tyrant's hand, by his selfish decision to preserve his own life, even when it meant sacrificing the whole world. This is the fate of Nosgoth, as long as Cain remains alive. An ironic condemnation. Given this guilty scene, one would think you'd torn down the pillars single-handedly. What are you trying to obliterate as you drag your loathsome body through this chamber? And why, as Nosgoth descends into madness and misery, do you appear to thrive? Things in this world, I am learning, are rarely what they seem. You, apparently, are no exception. I am the engine of life the source of Nosgoth's very existence. I am the hub of the wheel, the origin of all life, the devourer of death. Or maybe you're just hungry. Could it be as simple as that? Wouldn't that be poetic irony? The great adversary of the vampires turns out to be the biggest parasite of them all. Do not test my patience, Raziel. I made you... And I will unmake you if I become so inclined. As your agent, I am beyond death. There are fates worse than death, Raziel. Oh, I see you now as you truly are. A cancer. A spooling parasite burrowed deep in the heart of this world. Go now. Play out your pitiful rebellion, and take your place among the destroyed, the used, and the damned. But know this, you are mine for eternity, 
You have always been and will always be my soul reaver. Here I discovered the quaint hamlet of Ustenheim, now long abandoned and collapsing into ruin. Legend claimed that Janos Ordren terrorized its villagers until the Sarathan hunters ferreted him out and destroyed him. If there was any truth to the old tales, the lair of the infamous vampire would not be far away. This edifice was clearly not crafted by human architects. As the figure beneath the balcony silently attested, these were the Ares of winged beings. Undoubtedly, I stood before the mountain refuge of the legendary Janos Ordren, but the entire sanctuary lay in ruin, collapsed under the force of some ancient cataclysm. As I suspected, the time streamer's deception ensured I was centuries too late to unearth anything of consequence here. With nothing behind me but the wasteland I had traversed, I resolved to press on and explore these canyons further. Oh no. Every time you turn up, something monumental and terrible happens. I don't think I have the stomach for it. <laughs> No drama this time, Brazier. You are persistent, crossing time like this to follow me. Still waiting for that coin of yours to land on its edge. I'm biding my time. I see that Mobius has played a little trick on you. Yes, but clearly doesn't want me to meet this Janos Ordren. Perhaps. Or maybe he merely hoped that it would harden your heart against me to see this wasteland which I single-handedly authored. My heart doesn't need hardening, Cain. If I even suspected that destroying you would make any difference, I would do it this instant. <laughs> I knew you'd see through them, Raziel. Janos is indeed the key to your destiny. But you'll need to find your own way back into Nosgoth's path. Make no mistake, though, Razia. You and I are now in great danger. We are irritants here. Malevolent forces are being marshaled to eliminate us. You talk as though we're allies. Regardless of your sentiments, Raziel, in their eyes, we are. Well, they're certainly trying to eliminate you, Cain. There can be no doubt of that. I am assaulted relentlessly with demands for your demise. Whatever it is that you're plotting, they're scared to death of you. As for me, I suspect they made a grave error when they allowed my unique resurrection. I don't think they know how to destroy me. You mustn't underestimate them, Raziel. And who exactly is this diabolical they to which we keep referring? If there's some grand conspiracy going on, the right hand doesn't appear to know what the left is doing. Even Mobius seems to be caught out at every turn. Mobius is a puppet, Raziel. Haven't you realized that yet? That's the sweetest irony in all of this. Nosgoth's great manipulator is their plaything. But the ones pulling the strings haven't shown their faces yet. They don't like us unwriting their carefully choreographed history, though, do they? You must understand, Razia, we haven't unwritten history, we've merely rewritten it. The future flows around our petty actions, finding the path of least resistance while admitting only the slightest alterations. This is the reshuffling you felt when you refused to kill me. And remember, Raziel, we are irritants in this regard as well. History will not allow the introduction of a paradox. 
And if events cannot be reshuffled to accommodate the change, it is the irritant who's expelled. Bear in mind that this may be exactly the outcome our enemies are trying to provoke. We must tread very carefully. The scenes I discovered here were unambiguous. This race of winged beings, the architects of the pillars and the creators of the Reaver, were Nosgoth's first vampires. Their bloodthirst appeared to be a curse inflicted upon them by their vanquished enemies. These images confirmed the truths that Cain had divulged to me, but I had been too incredulous to accept. I struggled in vain to see how the pieces fit together. How Cain intended to escape the dilemma of his destiny, and what role he had plotted for me. And why Mobius and the dark powers with which he seemed to be allied were so desperate to see Cain dead, and so intent on me being the instrument of his execution. I had no choice but to act purely on blind faith. There was no way to tell what error this device was tuned to, and I had neither the knowledge nor the means to set the machine myself. I hesitated only briefly. Then, throwing the switch, I hurled myself into oblivion and relinquished my will to the hand of fate. Beyond all hope and against all probability, it seemed that the device had unerringly delivered me to the error I sought. For these were Seraphan banners, and these vampires apparently the victims of their crusade. The coincidence seemed too convenient to naively ascribe to fate, but whether my opportune arrival had been orchestrated by Mobius or some other influence, I didn't know. If Janos Audrin still lived, I would find him. But I was wary of further deception, and resolved to tread carefully. For all the butchery of Mobius's crusade, this massacre was somehow more chilling. The killing fields of the Seraphan betrayed a kind of orderly ruthlessness, the cold-blooded righteousness of the true believer. By all that is holy! Here at last, in the flesh, I beheld my former brothers in arms, the warrior priests of the Seraphan Order, their lives devoted solely to the annihilation of the Vampire Plague. And while I confess, I felt a twinge of longing, a pang of grief for what I had believed was my lost virtue, I regarded them now with none of the reverence I formerly felt. For I had seen the human face of the Vampires, and now I beheld the monstrousness of these men. After my long journey, I finally stood on the threshold of enlightenment. For here was Janos Audrin's mountain retreat, intact and unblemished. The upheaval that would one day topple this ancient edifice had not yet occurred. And while I had no certainty that Janos still lived, this scene boded well. For I presumed that the collapse of the retreat must have followed the ancient vampire's demise. There was only one obstacle. How to reach the balcony suspended at that maddening height so far beyond my reach. For this was the architecture of winged creatures, and the tattered ruins of my wings were of no use. I would need to devise some other means into that mountain.
Janus Audrin? It is heartening after all these years to hear my name spoken without contempt. Razia? My child, what have they done to you? I have been dragged through hell and back, all it seems to reach this moment, but I don't yet know why. For thousands of years I have waited, alone, here, losing faith. At the time of the binding, nine guardians were called to serve the pillars, and I was summoned as the tenth guardian, the keeper of the reaver, the weapon of our salvation. Over time, our race died out, until I alone remained, sustained only by my obligation to you and by my guardianship of the blade. And the other nine? Why did their guardianship not sustain them? I don't know. As our race dwindled, the humans prospered. I have watched over the centuries as our history faded into myth and finally receded altogether. The humans have forgotten us entirely and claimed the pillars for themselves, wholly ignorant of their true purpose. To them, I am merely a devil, the origin of their vampire plague. Why would the pillars summon human guardians, then, if they are meant to be served by vampires? The pillars choose their guardians from birth, Raziel, and vampires are no longer born. This is the crux of our dilemma. And this is the terrible irony. With their vampire purge, the members of the Circle have assaulted the very architects of the pillars they are sworn to protect. They have embarked on a treacherous path. With every vampire they kill, the humans are slitting their own throats. <sighs> they know I'm up here, beyond their reach, and it terrifies them. You can see how they flaunt their kills to torment me, or perhaps simply to lure me out. They have this foolish notion that destroying me will somehow topple our entire bloodline. <laughs> Thankfully, we're not that fragile. I have seen them mustering their forces in the village below. Yes. I don't know what they're plotting. But I fear our time may be bitterly short. Mankind seems to have brought you only torment and grief. You must hate them. They fear what they don't understand, and they despise what they fear. But no, I do not hate them. Vorador does. Mm, he has suffered much. He cannot forgive them. Should they be forgiven? They don't understand what they're doing. They are simply unenlightened and vulnerable to manipulation. So, it's all true then, what Cain and Vorador have told me. I really am some kind of unholy vampire messiah. Unholy? No. Messiah, perhaps. I don't like that word. Smells of martyrdom. Raziel, your role in this world's destiny is more crucial and more benevolent than you've allowed yourself to believe. Your journey will not be easy. Dark powers are allied against you. But I think you already know this. You appear to have been cruelly tested. The binding must be secured, Raziel. The pillars are the lock. And the reaver is the key. Yes. The reaver is here. Why do I feel nothing? The most formidable weapon ever forged by our swordsmiths. They infused the blade with vampiric energy, empowering the reaver to drain our enemies of their precious lifeblood. As Janos presented the blade, an inexplicable sense of dread crept over me, more palpable than anything I'd felt before. 
I was at once horribly repelled by the sword, and yet irresistibly compelled to touch it, to take it up. Please, take it away from me. I fear you have been followed. You must save yourself, Raziel. Janos! No! My surroundings whirled sickeningly, and I found myself transported safely away from the ambush to an adjacent chamber. Janos had delivered me from the Saraphan selflessly forfeiting his own safety to preserve my life. And now I feared that my newfound mentor would be slaughtered by the very crusaders I had so recently revered. The irony pierced me, and with dawning horror I realized that I had been duped by Mobius from the beginning, for the Saraphan had simply followed the path I gullibly blazed through this sanctuary, and had arrived bearing Mobius' staff. Thus armed, they had Janos at their mercy. Through the door, I could hear them battling, less than a dozen paces away. But it may as well have been a thousand miles, for this barrier was sealed by elemental forces I did not possess. It seemed Janos had conveyed me into the heart of the Fire Shrine. I thought perhaps if I could galvanize the forge and imbue the Reaver in time, I might have a slim chance of saving Janos from his grisly fate. Alive! Raziel, we must get out of here! Remember the sword! Forgive me. I'm sorry. I failed you. No, Razia. Perhaps this was my true purpose. Simply to save your life this once. While I have taken yours. Embrace your destiny, Razia. You must reclaim the river. It was forged for you and you alone. Without it, there is no hope. As I backed away from Janos's body, I was overwhelmed by a sense of self-loathing so deep I could barely contain it. In that instant, I rejected all that I ever was, and embraced the role Janos had safeguarded for me so patiently throughout the centuries. I knew then what I had to do, the task for which I was uniquely prepared. I would pursue the Seraphim dogs to their loathsome fortress and avenge Janos Audrin's murder. 
Mobius would pay dearly for his treachery, and my Saracen brethren would reap the horrors they had sown. I would retake the stolen Riva, which was rightfully mine. And finally, when all these debts had been paid, I would reclaim Janos Ordrin's heart from their filthy, unworthy hands. If the heart was truly imbued with the power to restore vampiric unlife, its highest purpose was clear to me. I would restore the heart to Janos, and thus undo the vile crime committed by my abominable former self. So, these demonic pests were not merely the product of Nosgoth's corrupted future, for here they were, hurtling back over five centuries to pursue me. These creatures, I suspected, were minions of the unseen forces that had hoped to control me. This was the tangible expression of their displeasure. These demons were unleashed as the penalty for my disobedience. Say, Noskoth. Let me enlighten you, poor Raziel. There he is, the savior of Noskoth. I wonder, old one, did you truly resurrect me, or were you simply there when I awakened from my torment in the abyss? I suspect you found me merely convenient, dropped in your lair by Cain, indestructible for some reason, a durable and gullible tool for you to manipulate. This one thing I readily admit, I have been used by others time and again. But always I seem to stray from their path. What is it about me, demon, that makes me such an unreliable instrument? Why do I survive one trial after another, on and on, in an endless succession of humiliating deaths and resurrections? It seems there is much more to my destiny and my history than I know. Perhaps more than you know as well. What a fool. Suddenly and inexplicably, I discovered the reaver suspiciously laid across my path. Again, I sensed nothing of that temporal distortion the peculiar sense of displacement I had felt when I encountered the Reaver in William's chapel. Cornered here with the blade, I suffered the same nameless dread that I had experienced when Janos first presented the Reaver to me. I felt at once repelled by the blade, and yet overwhelmingly compelled to seize it. So, Raziel, here we are, finally. You have no choice but to confront me now. 
and I am not so foolish as I've let you believe. We have business to conclude. You knew I would lead the Seraphan to Janos, you vile bastard. You've been orchestrating my every move. <laughs> my destiny is an amusement to you. It was fun while it lasted. I think not, Raziel. Malik, do not let this creature leave. He poses a danger to the circle. Poor, deluded Raziel, did you somehow imagine you had the guile to change history on me? I'm the time streamer. I knew your every intention before you did, you imbecile. Call your dogs! They can feast on your forces! Lord Mobius, there is trouble within. The circle is under Hold attack. Hold fast, Malik. This one is the real danger to us. What are you trying to concoct here, Mobius? You toxic creature. Did you imagine I'd simply allow you to run loose? Corrupting everything you encounter. I admit that I've underestimated you to this point, Mobius. But it's a mistake I won't repeat. Wrong again, Raziel. Now, Mac. Bolt the door. Using his staff to disable my wraith blade, Mobius effectively disarmed me, leaving me with only one choice of weapon. And yet I confess, it was not the lack of options, but blind rage that made me take up the reaver. In my fury, it felt as though my hand had acted of its own will. And now that same hand clutched the hilt with unyielding strength, and I felt a constrained tingling, a remote but palpable sense of longing, as the disabled wraith blade tried vainly to embrace its physical twin. Come to take your revenge, demon. Back to hell with you! I recognize these two as my former brethren, in life as Seraphan, and in unlife as Cain's vampire sons. Melchiah and Zephon, the weakest of Cain's brood. These bastards had no idea what future lay in store for them. How they would become the very thing they so despised. The Reaver hummed with ravenous anticipation. Janos had called it a vampiric blade, endowed with the power to drain its victims of their lifeblood. I was eager to see what the Reaver would do to these two. As Melchiah and Zephon fell before my blade, I felt the Reaver's bloodthirst as keenly as I ever had when I was still a vampire. I could sense the boundary between us dissolving. The Reaver was consumed with my rage, and I was intoxicated by its bloodlust. The blade had a vitalizing effect on me. My physical energy no longer decayed over time, and the wounds inflicted by my foes healed almost instantly. The Reaver had made me invincible. Have you come to reclaim the monster's black heart? You'll have to get through us first. My former brethren, Duma and Rahab, confronted me next. This all seemed so elegantly choreographed. Exhilarated by the Reaver, I was drunk with revelations. I could finally appreciate the delicious irony of Cain's blasphemous private joke, and I reveled as I colluded with him across the centuries, 
for it was I who put these bastards in their tomb, thus providing the corpses for Cain to raise as his vampire sons a millennium from now. Get back to the pit you crawled from, demon. And here at last was my brother Turel, who along with Duma would bear me into the abyss without questioning Cain's command. So dutiful and righteous, even as a vampire. I guess some habits die hard. The vampire Turel had eluded my vengeance. The Saraphan Turel would not. So, vampire, here we are. You've destroyed my brethren, and now you've come for me. You'll find I'm not such easy prey. I don't want to kill you, but I will if I must. Return the heart to me, and we can end this now. So, you've come to avenge that filthy parasite and reclaim his foul heart. You're a righteous fiend, aren't you? Apparently, I am. No, vampire. This is where it ends. But you won't be leaving this room. Now, let's finish this. I'll make it mercifully quick. As you did for Janos? <laughs> no, that beast had eluded us for far too long. It would have been a shame to end him too quickly. It's ironic, really. The great Janos Ordrin turned out to be no challenge at all. Thanks to you. Did you hear his cowardly screams when I tore that black heart out of his carcass? I renounce you. <gasps> And so it ends. My history comes full circle. Sensing its twin, the wraith blade uncoiled itself from me, and instead wound lovingly around its former self. I felt its grip loosen, and as the blade left me, its absence chilled me more than its presence ever had. A foreboding sense of emptiness and loss stole over me, and a terrible revelation gathered like a storm at the edge of my awareness. With all other foes exhausted, the conjoined blades turned themselves on me, and I realized, finally, why I had sensed nothing when Janos offered me the blade. The Reaver was never forged to be a soul-stealing weapon. The ravenous, soul-devouring entity trapped in the blade was, and always had been, me. This is why the blade was destroyed when Cain tried to strike me down. The Reaver could not devour its own soul. The paradox shattered the blade. So, this was my terrible destiny. To play out this purgatorial cycle for all eternity. I could not bear it. Despair overwhelmed me. You. Are you enjoying this game? Oh. Don't fight it, Raziel. Give in to it. Was this your destiny for me all along? Trust me. I felt myself weakening, unable to hold on any longer. The Reaver was too strong, the compulsion to simply let go, too great. And then, a growing sense of vertigo and the familiar displacement. The paradoxical moment when my twinned soul hovered both outside and inside the Reaver Blade. This 
was the instant. The glimmer of temporal distortion Kane had been counting on all along. This was the edge of the coin. The minute flicker of probability upon which Cain had gambled everything. Now you are free to reclaim your true destiny, Raziel. Behind Cain's eyes, I could see new memories blooming and dying as history labored to reshuffle itself around this monumental obstruction. And I could see by the dawning horror on his face that perhaps we had strained history too far this time. That by trying to alter my fate, he may have introduced a fatal paradox. My god. The Hilden. We walked right into their trap. Raziel, Janos must stay dead. But Cain's warning was lost as I slipped into the spirit realm, too weak to maintain my physical form. And there, waiting for me as always, was the Reaver, the Wraithblade, my own soul, twinned and bound eternally to me. And I realized that I could never escape my terrible destiny. I had merely postponed it. History abhors a paradox. From the shards of tattered dreams I rose, unwilling, tossed upon tides of pain that flowed and ebbed and left me searingly awake, and more revoltingly, alive. It was then I saw her for the first time. Good evening. We did not expect you to awaken so soon. Already you surprise us. My mind was in fragments like shattered glass. Where am I? I don't remember. Yes. It was said your memory would be affected by your long slumber. That will pass in time. I am Uma, and I am here to help you. Know that your name is Cain, 
And you were once a power in the land. I know my name. But my past, I remember fragments only. That you awoke at all is a miracle. When we found you, there was but the barest thread of life left in you. We nurtured it, fed it, and now you rise and walk again. And what is this place? You are in the city of Meridian, capital of the land of Nalsgoth, the land you once sought to conquer and rule. Tell me, since you remember your name, do you also remember your nature? Of course. Then let me show you the future. You have been asleep for 200 years. In that time, this is what has become of Nazca. You were a great general, commanding an army of vampires, but the powers you opposed were too strong for you. You were struck down, your armies defeated, scattered, and destroyed. Everyone believed you to be dead. Who defeated me? The Seraphan, an army of fanatical humans sworn to eradicate all vampires from the world. A new leader brought them together, and wielding a new kind of magic, deadly to our kind, was able to destroy your army and kill most of the vampires. You were defeated in mortal combat by this leader the Seraphan Lord. But that is not the end of the story. Under the guise of protecting the land from the vampire menace, the Seraphan seized control of all of Nazgoth, and their rule is not kind. For 200 years, the Seraphan have enslaved the humans under their iron rule, and hunted down and destroyed every vampire they could find. They have not succeeded, however. Not yet. And now, with your help, it is our hope to crush the Seraphan and restore order to the city. The natural order. Vampires preying upon humans. Naturally. You said our hope. Who are you? We are the Cabal, the Vampire Resistance. We work to undermine the Seraphan at every turn. But we are losing. With the new magic they employ, the Glyph magic, they are able to find us and kill us. Our numbers are dwindling. Without help, we will not survive. We need you, Cain. Of course you did not bring me back simply out of kindness. There must be a price. We need you to help the Resistance. Our faces are known. They kill us on sight. But you are ancient history, long since dead and buried. You can go where we cannot. That gives us a small advantage. How splendid for you. And why do you suppose I would do this? What is to be my reward? Your eternal gratitude. Have you changed so much? The Seraphan Lord defeated you. Don't you want to kill him? When you have destroyed him, you can continue your ascent to power, restore your army, and rule the land at last. Does the lust for vengeance and power no longer stir you? Are you so dead? I seem to remember that I played the pawn once before. It ended badly. This time, you will prevail. We are simply your allies, not your betrayers. What we want from you is open and plain, with no hidden paths. If you succeed, so do we all. Are you asking me to trust you? We must trust one another. Together, we can defeat the Seraphan Lord. Once he is dead, his order will collapse. Mindless fools that they are. But there are dangers other than the Seraphan which must be overcome. I care not for any dangers. They will fear me, do you hear? Tell me where to find the Seraphan Lord. I'll have him buried within the hour. Such arrogance. If it were so easy, we would have done it ourselves, Cain. And you are far too weak to fight him yet. He is protected, too, by other vampires. Vampires in service to the Seraphan? Are they mad? They value their lives. While they serve the Seraphan Lord, he lets them live. I will enjoy destroying them. 
You would be lucky to survive one such encounter until you grow stronger. But should you prevail, then you will be able to absorb their veins and thus gain new abilities. To our kind, these are called the Dark Gifts. I look forward to meeting these traitors to our kind. My senses spun. My body ached. Weakness overcame me. You have the thirst upon you. Come, vampire. It is time for you to feed. Yes. Cain, do not be afraid. Huh? What magic is this? I am using the Whisper, Cain, a natural ability of vampires. In this way, we can keep in contact even over great distances. Yes, I remember now. She had been in my thoughts. I almost believed I had called her myself. Never fear. I cannot read your thoughts, but only speak into your mind and hear you in return. Now, proceed down this street. I shall be waiting. Welcome to the slums, Cain. We are in the oldest and most decrepit part of the city, where few people dare to come. A perfect place to train you. Train me? Do you take me for a dog? Your memory has been shattered, and your body has lain dormant for two hundred years. What skills you had must be recovered before you can be of any use to the Cabal. You must learn to fight and to survive. I thought you were taking me to feed. Patience, vampire. First, know that you are stronger and faster than mortal men, able to jump higher and farther than any human that ever lived. When your path is blocked, seek for a place to jump. Now, join me up here. Excellent. Know that you also have the ability to float. When you are on a ledge, such as this one, you may land silently and carefully by floating down. This will be important when I train you to kill. Now, follow me. She would discover... I needed little training in how to kill. This city is a labyrinth. All the better for a hunting ground. Tell me, Cain, are you hungry? Yes. I have a prisoner waiting for you down below. A thug from a local gang of criminals. He sought to murder yet another helpless victim. But he met me instead. Spare me the moral anecdote, and direct me to his throat. Drink, then. I will be waiting below. I spoke before of our mortal enemies, the Seraphan. It is their sworn crusade to destroy all vampires, and for this they have developed special defenses. You see here a ward gate. What precisely does it do? Should you so much as touch it, you will be burned as by fire. The Seraphan have raised these wards throughout Meridian. We can go no farther this way. Follow me into the sewer. What manner of sorcery is this? This is Glyph Energy, a new form of magic brought into the world with the rise of the Seraphan. It supplies power to all of Meridian. The gate, you see, can be opened using this energy. Activate the glyph box. This will bring power to the gate's lever and allow you to open it. Well done. The glyphs are operated by the Glyph Rites, a secret society existing within Meridian. You may see them working on glyphs from time to time. They rarely talk with the townsfolk, and very little is known about their origins. 
Ahead is the market where the common dregs of Meridian engage in their filthy commerce. Beyond the market is the bridge that leads to the lower city. Make your way east to the bridge. I shall meet you there. And where are you going? I shall scout ahead to ensure that you don't meet any Seraphan patrols. You aren't ready for them yet. How trusting of you to leave me to my own devices. Consider it an act of goodwill. Come, this way. Follow me. Where are we going? I am taking you to Sanctuary, the heart of the Cabal. It is time that you meet our leader. It was time indeed to hear this so-called leader's plans and learn what he thought his plans might be for me. Cain, this way. Vampire! Here, close the gate. Cain, you must find a way to reach the lower city. The smuggler's tunnel will take you there. Pestilent vampire, die! the Grand Hotel in the slums. A contact will meet you there. He will tell you where to go. Stinking, verminous, blood-sucking fiend! Do you want your death now? Come, and you shall have it. Come back! I was alone at last, in a city changed beyond all recognition, in a land that was under a curse. Should I follow her, as she asked, or go my own way, find my own answers? But answers were promised me in Sanctuary. After that, I would know what to do. I was told to meet someone here. Who's there? You must be Cain. You are a human. Curious that you would help one such as I. We hate the Saraphan, we humans. The things they do, it's not right, not natural. If your kind can bring them down, I'll help you, I will. I was told to find the smuggler's den. You're a stone's throw from the entrance. Go through, it will lead you to the smuggler's den. Careful, though. There's rogues down there that'll attack you on sight. Then they will die. Wait! Tell Uma that I helped you, please. She promised me the dark gift if I did as she asked. You'll tell her, won't you? I'm certain Uma will give you all that you deserve. Greetings, Cain. You eluded the guards. They were only human. Welcome to one of the glories of our fair city, the Smuggler's Den. As squalid as you found the slums, you will find this place even more offensive. Rogues and thieves rule the streets, and of course the Seraphan too have their own dealings here. You may expect small help from the inhabitants, and more trouble. I do not require their hospitality. You spoke of a smuggler's tunnel I must find? Yes. It is hidden somewhere in this district. I know not where. I have sent word to a member of the Cabal to help you. You will find him at the tavern, deep within this district. How will I know this person? He will know you. Find the tavern quickly. We will speak again later. Our Lord was correct. You are alive. 
Do you remember me, Cain, who served you so well? It was Faustus, one of the legionnaires of my army of vampires, an indifferent servant, <laughs> but now a traitor to our race. Faustus, it's true then. I hardly believed it. Vampires have turned against their own kind. What is our kind? In serving the Seraphim, I have protection. I have power. And who better to hunt down a vampire than a more powerful vampire? History is written by the winners, Cain. That is my kind. How many of us have been destroyed by the Seraphim? How many have been brought to their death by you? I care not for those destined to die. I don't weep for them, and I won't weep for you. Look around you, Faustus. Does your victory seem so assured now? A fleeting setback. Our Lord knows of your presence. He beat you before, and he will bury you now. But you will never know how it ends, Faustus. For I will bury you first of all. I have a surprise for you, Cain. Well done, Cain. You have already proven your ingenuity in negotiating the smuggler's den. Perhaps our leader was right about you after all. Ah, yes. The mysterious leader. Perhaps you will tell me now who he is. I will not name him to you, for secrecy's sake. But it is time that you two meet. You must go to Sanctuary, our headquarters. There you will find our leader. Go here, go there. What do you take me for? Your errand boy? You are not a general now, Cain. You are not in a position to demand. Go to Sanctuary and await me there. My orders are to investigate the industrial quarter in the north of the city. I will join you at Sanctuary and bring anything I discover. I need answers, girl. I want the Saraphan Lord. So do we all, Cain. But the time must be ripe, and you must be ready. Do not make the mistake of underestimating me. I don't. You are our last hope. I will not let you be wasted by premature action. Where then is this sanctuary? Nearby is the Red Raven Pub. Speak with the Tapster. She will tell you what to do. Why did I obey her? Why did I trust her even for a moment? I had gone my own way, always. But this time... I was impressed by you today, Cain. Soon, we will work together again and rid this plague from our land. <laughs> yeah. 
What poor soul has the misfortune of interrupting my feeding? One who shares your thirst and your curse. Ah, a voice from the past. So the rumors are true. Cain walks Nosgoth again. How do you know me, creature? How I would love to dispatch you here and now. And yet, I am required elsewhere. Good night. Wait. How do you like my handiwork, Kane? It's been a good night's feeding. You're a sloppy butcher, vampire. You jeopardize your presence by such bloodletting. But it isn't my presence that's in danger, Kane. It's yours. You serve the Seraphan, then? I serve no one but myself. Ah, I'd forgotten how much I loathe your arrogant tone. It will be a pleasure to silence it for good. We shall meet again soon enough. Vorador, the reformed sado hedonist of Termagant Forest. I had met him once before in his new role of patriarch. I still knew not to trust him. Ah, yes. Who but the father of vampires would lead the resistance? I am honored, Vorador. I need no false courtesies from you, Cain. We are allies only by necessity. But you are welcome to Sanctuary. It has not the splendor of your former castle, but I suppose it will have to do. It serves, but time is short. The Seraphan's power grows by the day. Soon our every haven will be destroyed. We are facing extinction once again. They thought once before they had destroyed us. Yet you proved them wrong. You created a new race, something I could never do. And from that race, I had my army. Now we are divided. And dying. Then rouse yourself. Make more of our kind. It takes time and energy to create a vampire. I have not the strength. No. As Umar told you, we must kill the Seraphan Lord. When he is dead, their power will crumble. You have come far already, Cain, and proven to be our greatest ally. We must plan our attack. Vorador! What is it? The worst has befallen. Forgive me, sire. Uma has been taken. Taken? How? Uma was searching the main building in the industrial quarter, as you asked. I stood guard outside. She whispered to me that she had found something important. What was it? I do not know. Before she could tell me, she was discovered by Seraph and Knights. I went to help her, but there were guards everywhere. I could not reach her. I heard them say she would be brought to the Seraph and Keep for public execution. No! Then the guards were upon me. And I was forced to flee. Forgive me for it. We need her information. We need to save her life, Kane. Yes, of course. So, I am to rescue her, sire. Our kind cannot approach the keep. We will be instantly discovered. You have the power to disguise your presence, but the chief entrance to the keep is far too heavily guarded. You must speak with the Bishop of Meridian. A bishop allies with us. The promise of immortality can be very persuasive for a bishop whose faith in an afterlife is wanting. The bishop knows a secret entrance to the Seraphan Keep. You will find him in the upper city. Tell him I sent you, and he will give you access to the keep. And if Uma is dead when I reach her? Then her discovery dies with her, and with it, our hope. Go now, Cain, and find the bishop. Uma's life depends on you, as do we all. So, the rumors speak true. Marcus, my old friend. A poor choice of words, Cain. We were not friends. Will you sour this reunion with old grudges? Granted, we parted on poor terms. You tried to murder me? I seem to have failed. You feared my growing powers. You knew they would one day surpass yours. Is that why you begged me to fight at your side when you wage war upon Nosgoth? Begged? I never begged. In your arrogance, you presumed me dead. 
that I was stronger than you knew. I crawled from my haven and fled into hiding. <laughs> That's the Marcus I remember. When the Seraphan proved victorious, I knew that my destiny lay with the Seraphan Lord. I offered myself to the winning side. I always knew you for a sneaking, cowardly opportunist. How unfortunate that my poor aim caused you so much suffering. This time, you will die completely, I promise you. No, Cain. Once more you underestimate me. The dark gifts manifest differently in each of us. Over the years during your absence, my powers have increased enormously. I now have the power to charm all living things, to subjugate their minds and make them do my bidding. You will kneel to me, Caden, and the Seraphan Lord will be pleased with my new slave. Now, obey me. What? Impossible! What manner of creatures have you been practicing on? Dull mortal fools, with their minds full of commerce and dung? My mind is far too strong for your powers. No matter. My mental powers still allowed me to read your thoughts. You seek the Bishop of Meridian, do you not? He has some information that you require. A clever trick. I will ensure that you never get that information. You may find the good Bishop, Caden, but when you do, he will be dead. Not if I reach him first. Greetings, old man. I assume that I address the Bishop of Meridian. I seek information on gaining access to the Saraphan Keep. You are to give me passage inside. I am sent by Vorador. What ails you? Speak! He speaks only at my command. What? You are too late, Cain. He is entirely in my power. Release him and I may spare your life. I hold the cards now, Cain. Surrender yourself to me, or I will kill him. What do I care for the life of some mortal? But the thought of killing you at last entices me. Tell me, Marcus, do you truly believe you can stop me? Stay back. You cannot win. The bishop will tell you nothing while he remains under my power, and you will never catch me. I do. I must thank you for destroying that fiend. He, he, he robbed me of my mind. He was a novice. Bishop, I require your help. Vorador has sent me to gain passage to the Saraphan Keep. One of our associates is held captive there. A fool's errand to enter the very maw of the beast. But yes, I will help you. I will take you there. I will show you the entrance. Well done, Kane. 
You have entered the Seraphan Keep at last. Not without difficulty. I encountered another old friend on the way. Marcus. I see. Then may I assume that another of the Seraphan Lord's guardians have fallen? You may. Many times I attempted to persuade Marcus to join with us, but he would not heed me. My arguments were more convincing. I sense that Uma is being held in the uppermost reaches of the Keep. You must hurry. She is to be executed soon. Where is the Seraphan Lord? Is he here? I do not know. His presence is masked from my senses. But you are no match for him yet, Kay. If you encounter him, hide. If he sees you, run! Run? Hide? Vorador, you do not know me. Your task is to find Uma quickly. Let nothing distract you. The information she obtained from the Industrial Quarter may allow us to defeat the Seraphan Lord at last. Do not destroy our only chance with hasty action. How sickened I had become with weary admonitions of safety and care. How I longed to rend the flesh of my one true enemy. How I thirsted for the taste of his life's blood on my lips. Cocaine, quickly. I will be watching. I thought no one would dare attempt to rescue me. You are either brave or foolish. You will find me relentless. There must be a glyph nearby that powers the ward. Find it and shut it down. What was it that you learned in the industrial quarter? Tell me, in case I cannot free you. Tell you now, before I am freed? What would you do in my place, Cain? I would offer my rescuer a token of trust. That information is for Vorador only. Haven't I earned your confidence yet? You have not rescued me yet. Very well. I will return shortly. You're hurt. It's nothing. We must get to the roof. Once I am outside these ensorcelled walls, I can use a spell to transport us back to Sanctuary. <gasps> no! At last. What living soul disturbs my order? What creature dare shed the blood of my servants? He had the sword. Soul Reaver, the prize I had won a lifetime ago, was in his foul possession. What is this? You know me. No. You were utterly destroyed. So easily. Your name was drowned in the backwaters of passing time. All your plans were set alight and seared to smoke and ashes. Let those words be your epitaph. You dare dream of killing me? That fantasy was quenched in blood long ago when I defeated you. And yet, you have learned nothing. Such a pathetic creature. Dare you to challenge me again? Die, fiend! No, Cain! Your death is fated at my hands. How many times must I teach you that lesson? He is too strong for you, Cain. With the Soul Reaver, he can kill us both. We must flee and fight him when we are stronger. No! Release me. That demon of filth is mine. I am your fate, Cain. Now and forever. However long you delay, you will come to me for your end. Uma, alive and safe. Cain, you have all our thanks. I can follow orders when it suits me. We met the Seraphan Lord. He showed himself? He is a touch more powerful than I expected. And he has the soul, Reaver. 
Strange that you did not tell me this at the first. You are not ready to fight the Seraphim Lord, I told you that. It was only by good fortune that we escaped. Vorador, I must speak with you. You have information for us, I know. You may speak. I was in the heart of the main factory in the Industrial Quarter. Before the guards discovered me, I had found a huge central chamber that housed some kind of magic portal. This portal looked into a place the likes of which I had never seen before. And this portal was held open by a single source of magic, a stone set on a pedestal. Borador, I believe it was the Nexus Stone. The Nexus Stone? Of course. What is this thing? Explain. The Nexus Stone is an item of great power. It can bend time and space to create doorways to any location within Nazgat. I know not why the Seraphan Lord would be using it within the Industrial Quarter, but we could put it to great use. And what use is that? One who wears the stone cannot be harmed by the Soul Reaver. And is this but a legend, to be proved false at the fatal moment? Oh no, no legend at all. It has been proven. The Seraphan Lord wore the stone when he defeated you 200 years ago. What? How else could he have resisted the power of the Soul Reaver? You were unable to use the sword's power, and without it, he was able to defeat you. Then I shall take the stone and use it to kill him. But know this, when I recover it, I will also claim ownership of it. I trust that is understood. Then you commit yourself to fighting the Seraphan Lord? There can be no turning back. I was committed to that from the moment you revived me. Nothing will turn me away. So be it. You must use the subway to reach the industrial quarter, which lies in the northeastern part of the city. Find your way past the gate that blocks the townspeople from entering. But perhaps we may leave that to your invention. Uma? Once in the quarter, look for the main factory complex. It is there that the stone is held. I will return with the Nexus Stone and the Salafan Lord's head. I left the relative safety of Sanctuary and ventured once more into the night. The industrial quarter of Meridian was, I discovered, a heavily guarded fortress. Rather than assault it directly, I stole into the workers' commons and began my quest for the Nexus Stone there. Were you followed? <laughs> These humans never look twice in my direction. Little do they realize their future lord walks among them. Now, tell me of this place. Uma tells me the Nexus Stone will be found in the main factory beyond the dam. There will be a gondola to take you there. If this is deactivated, you must look below for the glyph to repower it. But be careful of the guards. Have you any further wisdom to dispense? I sense the presence of another vampire close by. He may be watching you. I will whisper you again when it is needful. Once again, I began to feel the obligations of power. To deal justice fairly to all. One day my people would know me again for their lord. But the vampires who were traitors to their kind would know me first of all. Behold the great Cain, now a common thief. The fiend that dogged my shadow showed himself at last, and in the light I knew him. Another visage from my past. Sebastian, it is you who have been following me. And how long it took you to discover it? My master sent me to prevent your meddling further, and now you must die. Your master knows his days are numbered. I might have spared your life by asking that you join me. 
but I learned that lesson 200 years ago. You arranged the ambush that destroyed my army. You sold yourself to our enemy. I dealt the blow that cost you the war. Glorious, was it not? So many killed, so quickly, and all my doing. I never learned why. Did you think I would serve while you ruled Nosgoth? You and not I? The Seraphon Lord knows how to value me. I am to rule by his side and achieve what you never could. You fool! You think that butcher will permit you to live one moment longer than he has need of you? I will save you from your disappointment, Sebastian, and kill you now. I have waited two hundred years for the pleasure of killing you with my own hands. While you have been sleeping, my powers have been increasing. You haven't the smallest chance of defeating me. Tell me of the Nexus Stone and this portal. What is its purpose here? Speak, and I will spare your life. <coughs> Come, Cain. You lie in your throat, and we both know it. You are going to kill me. Indulge me, then, before you die. I'll tell you so that I may see your face when you learn. You are powerless. You cannot win. Your death is inevitable. The Nexus Stone's portal leads to an ancient device, deep underground, that will spell your destruction, Cain. A new reign will begin in Nosgoth. What is the purpose of this device? How will it serve the Seraphan Lord? Alas, he has not entrusted me with that knowledge. But soon everyone will know it. His plans are even now coming into fruition. Where is the device? Where under the earth? It lies beneath Meridian. Seek for it, if you will. I die happy in the knowledge that all your efforts will be wasted. Oh, Sebastian, our destiny could have been glorious. The land was ours for the taking. History would have been rewritten in our image. But not everyone shared my vision. And now your time is up. Your death will only make me stronger. I hope that knowledge comforts you. In your grave. Welcome back. How do you feel? A little better than dead. How did I come here? You are fortunate. One of our vampires saw you thrown from the roof of the factory as it was destroyed. He carried you here. The Seraphan were too occupied to notice you. Ah, I see that you have the Nexus Stone. And I see that you were courteous enough not to relieve me of it while I lay unconscious. 
I met another old friend, a vampire, guarding it. Before I killed him, he told me something unsettling. He spoke of an ancient device underground that will bring about victory for the Saraphan Lord. What do you know of this, Forador? I have heard tell of strange discoveries deep underground. Ancient legends speak of huge machines deep in the earth, left by the gods in eons past. And I know of one who can tell us the truth of this matter. She is a seer, a being said to be older even than I. We are fortunate in that she owes me a favor. Go to her, Kate, and learn what she knows. Go to her? This city is a walled fortress. How do you propose I get out? There is a secret way out of the city. I will show it to you. You may follow a canyon that leads north to her abode. The way will not be easy. Strange beasts roam outside the city preying on travelers. The people call them demons. I believe I've met one of these already. I hope your seer's knowledge is worth the risk. Be gone, Dark One. I did not send for you. And yet, here I am. So I see. Cain, the Disruptor, the pebble in the pond who destroys all he touches. You know me, woman? Better than you know yourself. And you know why I'm here? Perhaps. I seek information, and I must have it. What can you tell me of the device? The device? <laughs> <laughs> You're playing a dangerous game. Return to your night hunting, vampire. Enjoy what time remains to you, short though it is. I desire far more than blood. Where is the device? I will not go without an answer. Do you so enjoy being Vordor's lapdog? I am no man's dog, witch. No, I see that now. I sense your conviction. I shall help you. If Norsgoth is ever to be healed, the device must be destroyed. And you, of all men, could be the one to do it. Know this. The device has lain dormant beneath Meridian for time beyond time. But now, the Seraphan Lord has empowered the machine to unleash its destruction upon the land. The entrance to the device lies in the heart of the city itself under the very noses of the aristocracy. You will know the building by this sign. You will see this more than once, but the first one will show you the entrance to the device. No human can operate it, but a vampire could. What must I do? Come here. Drink. Drink my blood, now. <clears throat> what manner of creature are you? You are like no vampire that I have seen. Who I am, what I am, is of no concern to you. Time presses. He is here. Do as I tell you. If you are to destroy the device and save Nosgoth, you must drink. Ah. Oh, good. Yes, drink, my dark prince. Feel my powers coursing through your veins. You can manipulate objects already by sheer will alone. But, as you were taught, you can only use this ability at close range. By drinking my blood, you will be granted the gift of telekinesis. You will be able to manipulate objects at a great distance. And you will be able to activate this symbol and enter the device. Bathe them in fire. Let them learn as they writhe in the flames and their bones dissolve the futility of their actions. The vampire and all of his kind shall be raised from the land. This world will be made pure by my hand. I will give you the peace you seek, Cain. Your death beckons you. He has found you. Your destiny draws even closer. 
will transport you to the device. From there, use your newfound ability to gain entrance. What of you, Seer? Escape with me. I'm in need of allies. Am I your ally? My fate lies along a different path. Goodbye, Kate. One's life casts a shadow far beyond one's own understanding. Here, in this alien vault, I discovered a being whose existence was entwined with mine far more than I could ever imagine. Disturbs me. Not one of my captors. Cain? You know me, monster. My memory at present has its flaws, but I should certainly remember such as you. We have not met. I know of you, of course. That you can return from the dead gives hope to us all. I seek an ancient device of great power. I am prepared to kill any who stand in my way. Have no fear of me. I am enslaved by the fiends that built this monstrosity to feed this machine with my life. Then perhaps we have an interest in common. I'm here to destroy the device. Yes, yes. I can help you then. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, that which you seek is too great for you to destroy alone. It descends far underground. It rivals a city in its size. To destroy the device, you must seek out the being that built it. The Seraphan Lord? No, no, it is older, far older. <sighs> Those who dwelt in Nosgoth eons ago left some structures in their passing. The device is one. The Seraphan Lord discovered how to use it. Only the Builder can make it stop. Do you mean to tell me that this being still lives? It's impossible. Uh, he is. Listen to me. There is a place in Nosgoth, far to the north, where time means nothing, where hours and years are frozen for eternity. The Eternal Prison. The wretches imprisoned there pay for their crimes for eternity. The Builder is there. Ah, ah. The Eternal Prison. I have heard of such a place. I didn't realize it was so close to Meridian. How do I reach it? There is a tunnel leading out of the city through this room. It will take you to the prison. And if this Builder refuses my help? Tell him you wish to destroy the device. Believe me, he will aid you. I hope for your sake that what you have told me is true. <laughs> you may believe me. Destroying the device will free me. At last, I will be in your debt, Cain. Visitor, an intruder. We do not permit guests to disturb our routine. We are involved in the important work here, and nothing, nothing must be allowed to interfere. This is a place where those who have transgressed the laws of the gods and man, and so created a dangerous imbalance within themselves, contemplate the wrongs that they have done through peaceful, uninterrupted meditation until they have regained the balance of their true, perfect inner nature. 
This process must not be interrupted for any reason until a spiritual transformation has been achieved, however long that may take. Thus, no guests, no visitors are allowed, and intruders we know how to deal with. Go, now! ounces or 20 stone, you may go! Prisoner, I require information. You... you are not a jailer. I beg you, release me. First, you must answer me. I seek a prisoner in this place, a builder. He created a large device that lies below the city of Meridian. <laughs> seek no further. I am he. How fortunate. I intend to destroy this device. I was told only you can tell me how. I can indeed help you. But in return, I need an end to my suffering. Tell me of the device, and I will grant you any request within my power. Yes, yes, the device. The device was built as a weapon eons ago when two races warred with each other for dominance of Nazgoth. It houses an ancient creature whose very mind is capable of killing any living thing with but a thought. The device was to channel the mental energy of this creature and direct it onto Nazgoth. It would attune the creature's mind to kill all living creatures except for my race. Before it could be completed, however, I was imprisoned here, and the rest of my race was banished to another far more terrible realm. So this device was never finished, and yet the creature still lives within it. It was dubbed the Mass. It is eternal and deadly yet harmless without a channel for its mind. But we never completed the weapon. We needed a way to send its energy out of the device and into the land itself. We needed a conduit throughout the cities, a network, if you will. Once this network was created, the device would channel the mental energy of the mass and send death upon our enemies. You say a network? placed like a web throughout a city. We never completed the network. We never used the device. But the Seraphan Lord will. The glyphs. He is using the glyphs to channel the mass, to wipe out the city, humans and vampires alike. That must be his plan. If this is indeed true, you must act quickly. It would be too large a task to destroy the device itself. You must kill the mass itself. You said this creature was eternal. It has a simple weakness. Blood is like poison to its system. And not any blood, but pure blood from the Elder Races. My blood. My blood will poison and kill the creature. Drink from me, vampire, and use my life's blood to kill that which I created out of arrogance and pride. Kill me so that the mass will die, and the device will be destroyed! You have suffered here an eternity, poor wretch. I will grant you release from your prison, and I will carry your blood in my veins. I will bring the Seraphan Lord's plans tumbling before him.
already enemies, both stone and flesh. I won't lift a finger! I will destroy you with my mind! Leafs. Sire, wait. What trickery is this? No trickery, sire. I am your servant once again. Your champion. Pathetic wretch. I have no... Magnus? Could it be? It is I, sire. How is this possible? Here, in this cursed place, was my finest warrior. The Saraphan had fallen before him by the score. Together, he and I were invincible. Until... Magnus, the traitor. Is this your reward for betraying me to the Saraphan Lord? Sire, I did not... You left my camp in the night to join with my enemy, like all the others. Sire, no. I wanted only to serve you. I thought in my pride I would strike a blow that would end the war. I went to kill the Seraphim Lord, alone. I was your champion. You never returned. I failed you. I tried to kill him. Even now I cannot remember how he defeated me. I was struck down, helpless at his feet, and then, through his foul magic, he took my mind and transported me here to this hellhole. But what of you, sire? I heard that you were dead. Well, not so dead as some would like to have me. As you see, I have returned. Magnus, my champion, you have suffered long enough. It is with pride that I grant you your death. <clears throat> <clears throat> Go, my friend. Be free, as the rest of us, living or dead, can never be. I sense a change in you. You found the Builder. You are perceptive. He gave me his blood as a gift. I gave in return the gift he most wanted. Death. You are ready to descend to the device. Time grows short. My life is drawn from me. The device is alive. You must destroy it. What can you tell me of the creature within? The slaves speak of it as the mass. It has great power, yet it is just an animal. The blood in your veins will kill it. <laughs> How do I reach the device? This passage will lead you there. I will return when the device is destroyed. Wait. You must know your true enemies. My captors, they are not of this world. They control the glyph magic by which Meridian is enslaved. They pull the strings of the Saraphan while in the disguise of the glyph rites. They are called the Hilden, and their leader is, of course, the Saraphan Lord. 
They are powerful creatures, Cain. You will encounter them below. Beware their magic. Now, find the mass. Destroy the device. You may toast my victory at day's end. Until then. Here was the Saraphan Lord's ultimate weapon, his trump card, to be played against human and vampire alike. But I had my own weapon. I could feel the Builder's blood course coldly through my veins. If I could use it to poison this creature, the Saraphan Lord's plans would be ruined. You do not know me for the poor, oppressed beast that crouched here before. Behold, I am restored. What are you? Not what, Cain, but who? My visage is unknown to you, but my name is not. Have you heard the story of the oldest vampire? Janos Audren. The legendary vampire of ancient days. How? Was this transformation possible? But Janos is dead, his heart torn from his body. Not dead, but imprisoned in this place. My blood was needed to power the device and feed the mass within. Starved of blood and sapped of life, I devolved into that horrible creature. The moment you poisoned the mass, I felt my strength return. That which is divine cannot be wholly suppressed. Divine. Your imprisonment has damaged your mind, Janos. The curse of vampirism is no mark of divinity. Ah, you must delve further back into history, Cain, to know the truth of our heritage. Long ago, and long before I first walked the earth, vampires were godlike, and our kind ruled the land. But we were opposed by another race, similar to ours in power, but different in method and intention. The wars between us flamed for a thousand years, but we prevailed at last, and we banished our enemies from the face of the earth by powerful magic, sealing them into another plane of existence. What is this history lesson to do with my task at hand? Patience came. The race that fought the vampires was the Hilden, the very Hilden that you have just encountered. They control the Seraphim. They are striving to wipe out the vampires, enslave the humans, and reclaim all Nosgoth as their own. 
They are the evil that plague us once again, authors of the demons and the device and all else that threatens the land. They have returned to enact a terrible revenge. I thought you said that they were banished. They were, Cain. But several centuries ago, one of the Hilden was able to return to our world. He then used his magic to draw other Hilden through, but had not yet the power to begin a full invasion. He required an army here and humans to drain of energy. He learned of a legendary order whose purpose was to purge the world of vampires long ago. He revived this order, and the Seraphan were born again. The Seraphan Lord. It was he that broke through. But how? Ah, now we come to your part in this story. When you chose to destroy the Pillar of Balance, you caused a rift throughout the world sufficient to breach through the dimensions. Was it I, then, who had engendered this war? No. I had been set step by step upon the path that led to this outcome. Hadn't this all been a Hilden plot from the beginning? My mind reeled at the implications. It was in this way that the Seraphan Lord was able to enter the world by building a magical gate. This is the Hilden Gate. Close this gate, Cain, and all the Hilden within Nosgoth will perish. The gate sustains their existence. Precisely. It is their umbilical cord to the other world. When it is closed, they cannot dwell in our world. And so all the Hilden will die, and the Seraphan Lord, as one of them, dies as well. I see. Ah, close the gate and kill the Seraphan Lord, Cain. Close the gate and shut the Hilden from the world once again. And how is this to be done? Let us go to Sanctuary. Vorador must be informed of all that has occurred, and a plan can be drawn to finish this once and for all. You should have sent me with him. You were wounded. There is no way to know where Cain has gone or what he is doing. Even you haven't been able to contact him. What's this? No, wait. Do I dare believe my senses? Janos? My sire? They killed you. No, far worse. But that is a story for another time. Oh, there will be no time for any of us. Vorador, we need your counsel. We were wondering where you were. I've been doing what I said I would do. Cain? The device? I have destroyed it. But we are now faced with a peril even greater than before. How is this? The ancient history I will convey to you in a better hour, should any of us be so fortunate as to reach such a time. For this moment, you must believe me when I tell you your enemy, our great enemy, the Seraphan Lord, is one of a people that come from another world. His plan, beyond all others, is to bring this enemy race back into this world, from which my kind in another age once banished them. He must be prevented, or all our kind will perish. Sire... What must we do? He has created a base in this world, the Hilden City, across the sea. There he has opened a gate to bring his kind into our world. My plan was to teleport us to the Hilden City and launch a final assault on the Seraphan Lord. But now I find there is some kind of shield of magic that prevents me. If we are to fight them, that shield must be destroyed. Vorador, where is the Hilden city? Have any of your spies brought you this knowledge? Uma, what do you know of this? There has been, in the past months, enormous activity at the wharves. Warships and freighters loading and unloading in great secrecy. 
Our people who have infiltrated the area and returned alive have told me that the ships all seem to take the same course out of the harbor, but we do not know their destination. It must be the Hilden city. Why else would there be such interest at this time? You must take a ship to the city at once. There, you must find and deactivate the shield, so whatever forces we can bring may come to your aid and close the gate for all time. Have someone show me to the wharves. I'll make my way aboard one of those ships that's about to sail. When I've deactivated the shield, I'll contact you. I'm going with him. But I will need you here. Sire, I know the wharves. And where one may fail alone, two may succeed. I have no need of a guard at my back. You will find me perfectly competent for this task, I assure you. It is a chance we cannot afford to take, not when all we have fought for is at stake. There is more at stake than you can imagine. Take help where it is offered, Cain. It is settled. I will prepare our forces for the final attack. Go well, my child. Go well, both of you. Take help where it is offered. But I have always found that help offered when not needed is usually no help at all. Borodor has said we must seek out a war galley. We should search the southern docks. What are the defenses here? The heaviest of all the Seraphan outposts. They control all trade and all travel to and from Meridian. The Seraphan are nothing compared to what I have faced and destroyed. Don't be so arrogant. Their finest warriors will be waiting within. The Glyph Knights are deadly. We shall see. Tell me one thing, Cain, before we go in. If you do kill the Seraphan Lord and recover the Soul Reaver, what then? You know the answer to that. Tell me. Then Meridian and all Norsgoth will become mine. And the Vampire Resistance? Well, you may do whatever you wish, of course. Of course. What? Do you take me for a fool? You dare! Borodor has told me all your stories, Kane. He said that you would stop at nothing to achieve your great ambition, absolute power. And when you control Nosgoth, are we to believe that you would let us vampires live and do what we wish? We are the only ones who could stand in your way. No, you will have to hunt us down and kill us. And how is that different from the rule of the Seraphan Lord? I will not defend or explain my actions to you, Uma. No one, not even you, will stand in my way. I thank you, Cain, for giving us this chance to defeat the Hilden for all time. But you have done enough. I shall be the one to find and kill the Seraphan Lord, and Nosgoth shall belong to the vampires once again. You fool. You have not the smallest chance of surviving such a battle. Now, give me the Nexus Stone, or I shall pry it from your thieving fingers as you convulse in death. Now the beast shows his true nature, and so quickly too. I wish it had been otherwise for us, Cain. We meet again, Uma. Cain. Yes, Cain. I thought you were to bring the Seraphan Lord to his knees. I thought... I know. Oh, it seems... I, I was wrong. I could not carry the fight alone. You were brave to try. Cain. I'm dying. Yes, you are. I need your blood. Please, you can save me. I know. Tell me, child. Do you see me ruling Nosgoth? Yes, yes, I see it now. And do you believe that Nosgoth rightly belongs to me? I do, I believe it, Cain. Please. Then you may die, knowing the truth. <gasps> no! You should never have betrayed me. 
You could have been my queen. Okay. Oh. Now, you have left me alone. The charlatan emperor rears his head. You are far from home, Dark One. Spare your speeches, demon. Your secrets are known to me now. Your plans crumble like dust, brought down by my will. You have struggled longer than expected, but nothing has changed. You see before you your death. Know you not that your vaunted device is destroyed? Your hope of controlling Nosgoth lies in ruins. This world is mine. You understand nothing. You are a degenerate remnant of a cursed race, doomed to walk the night as a parasite. Your life is easily snuffed out as those you feed on to survive. My race is but a warped parody of our former beauty. We are, like you, fallen gods, scratching for our former power. We will prevail. We will cleanse this world of your kind, and bring about a new glorious age. Die, Cain! <laughs> the Nexus Stone! <laughs> Fitting, isn't it? The very item you used to defeat me now turned against you. You're finished. It matters not. The gate remains open, and even as we speak, my army, the likes of which this soft world has never seen, prepares to enter. Moskov is still mine for the taking. What was that? He is the one. He must be. Look at him. He is the one who is working against them. Sir, is it true? Are you the vampire who's been making war on the demons? I am Cain. Do you know this place well? We do, my lord. I must find the mechanism these creatures use to hide their presence in this city. He can show you. Go on. It is there, my lord. That building. I've heard them talking. The voice you seek is within. I thank you. Now tell me, what is that? That is the only way to get within. The doors to the building no longer function. Like so much of this place. And that one there? We don't know. But our stories tell us that is where the demons first appeared in our world. Stories? How long have your kind been in this place? We have been here forever. Our oldest fables tell us that our gods abandoned us here. There are others like us. New ones. Soft ones. The demons bring them here from other places to work. They tell other stories. They had no knowledge of the arrival of the demons. We had to tell them. Enough. Be silent. That building surely leads to the gate. But first, I must destroy the device. How long? Have the Hilden held a foothold here, while we, unsuspecting, fought and triumphed in our petty wars above. Cain, the Hilden City's defenses have been broached. Janos can no longer sense a ward barrier. It's my doing. I've shut down their foul magics, at least for a time. Then we are ready to help you. Janos is casting a spell that will bring us to you in moments. Excellent.
I look forward to thanking you in person for saving Uma's life. Yes, of course. Where's Uma, Kane? I cannot sense her. She will not be joining us. Uma is dead, is she not? Were you too late? No. She suffered the fate she deserved. She stole the Nexus Stone from me. So you refused to help her? I dealt with her as I deal with all traitors. I killed her accordingly. You did what? I did as you would have done, Vorador, to any human or vampire who defied your will. Monster! She chose her fate. Was she acting as the dutiful lieutenant, following her superior's orders? I care not. What's done is done. We were wrong ever to trust you. Do you so wish to return to the grave, old friend? You are in no position to challenge me. No, we have no time for this discord. I sense that the Hilden Gate is nearby. I can transport us there. We will settle this in good time. Tonight, the Saraphan Lord dies. Tomorrow, we shall see. This round is mine, Dark One. I must tend to Vorador. Proceed without us, King. I can teleport you to a place near the gate, but you will have to close it on your own. Use the Nexus Stone, cast it into the gate, and the magic of the stone will destroy it utterly. Cast your spell, then. And let us finish this. At last, I had hunted my prey to his very lair. The Hilden Gate was before me, from which the Hilden General, in his guise of the Saraphan Lord, planned to bring forth his alien armies and destroy us all. Turn, vile demon! Your reckoning day has come! Okay. Did you think you could defeat me? All your plans are revealed, together with your true nature. Turn and enter the gate you have fashioned and join your kind before I obliterate it. Or stay, and be destroyed upon its rubble. I confess I did not expect to find you here, at the heart of my endeavor. You are indeed a more capable adversary than I have thought possible. You can ponder that thought when you have made your choice. Return to exile or death. Do you think the game is over? Do you think it will end with me? Have you not wondered why so many of your trusted henchmen, time and again, bend their knees before me, accept me as their lord, and join their cause to mine? Cowards and traitors deserve no second thoughts, only their complete annihilation. Did it not occur to you that perhaps my cause, and not yours, is the cause of right, of justice? That your ambition to rule this world is but the youthful craving of a petty noble who has gained too much power, but never enough silence, demon. Your need to corrupt is only too apparent. But every traitor that you have turned to your will from my side, even Uma, your latest spy, is dead. Uma? I have no spy called Uma. You lie! Destroy the gate. Stalemate came. And mine is the waiting game. As long as I have not lost, in time, I am sure to win. But I have not yet made my choice. No. No. No! You. Yes. 
prisoner, from whose blood you built your evil plans. What could be more righteous than to take our revenge and your freedom from the same source? Tortured eons of suffering are too good for you, vampire. But not for you, Hilden, who has dared to set a corrupting foot upon this world after your banishment. Return to the demon dimension in which you belong. And by what right, cursed one, did you send my kind to that place of evil? By what right did you lay on us the curse that drove us from the light and made us predators of humankind? It was justice for our banishment from the world. You see what it has made of our once fair race. I see you have taken your true form at last. Then go and see what it makes of you. Ah! Ah! Cain, the sword! I sentence you to the hell of your own making. A prisoner for all time. No! Cain! And now, it is your turn. the battle, but the war between your kind and mine will never end. Our banishment in the demon dimension also ensures our immortality. One day, we shall return. Should your kind breach that place of banishment again, I will be waiting. <laughs> you will not live. I have lived long enough to dispose of you. What was it she said to me in that fatal moment when she took from me the Nexus Stone? How would my rule differ from that of the Saraphan Lord? If you had lived, Uma, you would have learned the difference. You should have trusted me. The war was over, and yet there was another battle to be fought. The cruel masters of Nosgoth, the Saraphan, now leaderless, still had to be put down. There were cities to be rebuilt, and order to be restored, and a new rule. My rule would then begin. To the victor go the spoils. At last, Nosgoth would be mine. So I returned to the sanctuary of my enemy, the fortress of the Saraphan Brotherhood, deemed impossible for any man to penetrate. <laughs> impossible for any man.
Deep within these walls my prey awaited. Mobius the Time Streamer, deceiver and eternal gamester, using living beings as his pawns. In the end, we'd rooted out an entire nest of the fiends. But we had swept that area already. Not well enough, but no matter. We purged every last one of that brood with fire where their souls now rest. Lord Mobius will be pleased. It was time for Mobius to answer a few questions. I hoped for his sake to find him in a forthcoming mood. Yes, I understand. It will be done. The stage is set. You needn't linger in the shadows, Cain. It has been a long time, hasn't it? No banter, Mobius. You know why I'm here. Yes, Raziel. You sought to introduce your own pawn into this game, and now he's been swept from the board. By your hand, I suspect. Where is he? Perhaps you should ask, when? <laughs> How humiliating it must be for you to come begging at my doorstep for answers. Enough wordplay. Don't threaten me, Cain. You see, I have the upper hand. How remarkable that the great Cain should succumb to the Scepter's power like any common vampire. <laughs> Still so arrogant after all these years, thinking you've devised some brilliant plan. You know nothing. You have read the signs, but missed their meaning. You believe you are that myth of vampire prophecy, the scion of balance, and that Raziel holds the key to fulfilling your destiny. <coughs> But your messianic delusions have blinded you to Raziel's true nature. You have no idea what you've unleashed. There was a time when you might have heeded wise counsel when it was offered. Now, your vanity has made you witless. You will have to learn the truth for yourself. You'll be needing this. Your strength will return after I have departed. But by then, you will have more urgent concerns than pursuing me. Perhaps, when we next meet, you will have learned a little humility. These strange creatures seem to manifest from the very shadows. Surrender, Raziel. Abandon this petty rebellion. It was I who made you. Your life had played out, and in my grace, I spared you. You are my reaper of souls. You have no other purpose, no higher destiny. Just this. Accept your calling, Raziel. Let go of these vain hopes. Relinquish your will, and feed. No. What do you profit from this defiance? There's some grim satisfaction in infuriating you. My patience is eternal, Raziel. How many eons can you bear to languish here? The wheel of fate must turn. All are redeemed in the cleansing agony of birth, death, and rebirth. This is the engine of life, the purifying rhythm of the universe, to which all souls are irresistibly drawn. Yours is a necessary and noble function, Raziel. 
Enough of your sermonizing. Are you trying to bore me into submission? Why must this game go on? We both know what you are. You are no better than the vampires you so despise. A voracious parasite, cloaking its appetite in a shroud of righteousness. I refuse to do your will. I can see into your heart, Raziel. It is not your will, but cowardice that keeps you here. How so? You know what fate awaits you when you leave the underworld. That phantom weapon you bear is a constant reminder, isn't it? The sword is waiting for you out there somewhere, and you tarry so as not to meet it. I could not deny it. As long as I lingered here, defying my captor, I was able to postpone what I feared was my inevitable doom. To become the ravenous spirit imprisoned in the Reaver Blade. But that sentence was no worse than the stalemate I now endured. Better to face one's destiny than cower from it. Harvester of souls, I created you. And to this function, my angel of death, you will return. Enough. Yes, I submit. Very good. Indulge your hunger. Yes, embrace your calling, Raziel. You will find that just as defiance has its price, so obedience has its rewards. And submission is not always what it seems. escape had not been anticipated, or my benevolent master would not have expended such efforts to prevent me from going. And if my departure displeased him, then that was a victory, however small, for me. At last, I discovered a conduit into the material realm. I would finally escape the spirit world and take one step farther from my tormentor. <laughs> Did you think to receive the same favors after your rebellion as before? No, Raziel. I have no need for you to enter the physical world, so no conduit will be granted. You serve me adequately as a wraith, and a wraith you will remain. So, my restraints had not been removed, only loosened. I would not be held prisoner in the Spectral Realm. There had to be another way. As I emerged, I was granted a vision of what I would become if I did not escape the Spectral Realm. For these two were agents of my master, hunting the lost souls that struggled to escape the endless twilight of the underworld. My master's plan for me was ominously clear. Like these mindless hunters, I existed only to fuel him with souls, siphoning their energy to feed him and his wheel of fate. I had to break these bonds while I still possessed my own will. Tell me, where can I find your master? <laughs> Quickly, Mobius is... In the tower! Good.
Here you are at last. I see you found a fragment of the balance emblem. This will be of even further use to you if you can find the other three. Now, shall we? Yes. Let us continue our conversation, but on a somewhat different footing. Now, what do you have to tell me, Mobius? You cannot kill me. We both know that this is not how or when I die. Death is not the only possible outcome. Your delusions of fulfilling the vampire's foolish prophecies have badly distorted your judgment. And Laziel is not what you think. You dare imagine what I think. So, you prevented Raziel's soul from entering the Reaver. Do you believe for a moment that by this you have averted your fate? Or his? Or that of Nosgoth itself? Your manipulations are pathetic. Yet Raziel retains his free will, and that's what frightens you, isn't it, Mobius? You cannot see his path, and so you cannot control it. And neither can you. Yes, Raziel is shrouded from us, but we see the ripples of his potential actions, and every path he might choose leads to the same outcome. He will kill you, Cain. In sparing Raziel, you have written your own death sentence. You still have not answered the question I came to ask. Where is Raziel? He is not, in a true sense, here. Not now. Don't try my patience, Mobius. What have you done with him? He is contained. In time, it may be safe to release him. His destiny must be completed. He will enter the sword. But until that time, he is dangerous. Far more dangerous than you could understand. And your incontrovertible evidence? The answers are plain, if you know where to look. Go west of the pillars. There you will find a testament written in stone. But stones, too, can lie. The pillars of Nosgoth stood pristine against the horizon. To the west, I would find the enlightenment Mobius felt I lacked. There had to be a way to escape the spirit world without the help my master was pleased to deny me. Only in the material realm would I have a chance to seek my destiny or change it. In this crypt, I discovered ethereal gases rising from the moldering corpse within. As I neared, I felt a distinct spiritual pull, and the closer I approached, the more that pull intensified. In the end, it was not difficult. I projected myself down into that tomb. I found myself reborn into the material world. It was a loathsome vessel, but with an effort of will, that too could change. She says she won't go near the place. I tell you, the pillars are haunted. Haunted? I heard a woman's voice talking and moaning, and there was no one there. How many vampires have you killed, and you can't face down one ghost? I knew who these were. Vampire hunters, scouring the countryside, destroying what had once been my kind. <gasps> my god, what is that? A vampire or a demon? Where? Here. Get him! These were Mobius's hunters. Mercenaries enlisted in his crusade to exterminate the vampires. His insignia was unmistakable. 
but this meant I'd been captive in the underworld for centuries. I had lost five hundred years. Then I knew what ghost it was that haunted the pillars. Ariel, the spectre of the murdered Balance Guardian. Perhaps she could provide the answers I sought. But first I would have to find a way out of this cemetery. What is this? How do you know me? Razia, what are you? Why should, should they know you know me? You are nothing. It seemed my method of entering the physical realm was not altogether original. But where had these beings come from? I felt a sense of displacement as some arcane sorcery transported me away. This was truly an ancient ruin of a vampire civilization. Perhaps here I would finally decipher the riddle of my destiny. Throughout these ruins, I found murals depicting the seminal events of vampire history. These scenes commemorated a great war between the ancient vampires and their rivals. In triumph, they banished their adversaries from the world and raise the pillars as the lock that binds them. The image of the Reva was inscribed throughout this place, always depicted with reverence. The vampire's holy weapon was destined to be borne by their prophesied hero, for whom it was forged. But if this was my destiny, why had the Reva tried to consume me? This scene depicted the appointment of the original vampire guardians, each summoned to serve when the pillars were raised. Each guardian is aligned to the principle of the pillar he serves, and the balance guardian is the axis of them all. Again, I experienced an odd sense of displacement as I was transported to the vampire ruin once more. But this chamber was different than the first. In their defeat, the vampire's enemy retaliated with a terrible curse, afflicting the vampires with a bloodthirst that turned their once noble race into ravenous predators. This curse plunged the vampires into despair and apparently drove many to madness and self-annihilation. What was it that so devastated them that they were driven to suicide? How strange, to see this place long before my birth. Centuries before the corruption set in that would poison the land and put me on the treacherous path I still followed. In the future, these edifices would be condemned to darkness and decay. I would cause their fall and build my empire upon their ruins. Was it still possible? that with the right knowledge, the right moves, I might one day see Nosgoth restored, the pillars pure once more. My answer, according to Mobius, lay somewhere to the west of this place. I could restore the world, perhaps, but never again could I give Nosgoth back her innocence. The mist that shrouded this lake, miraculously now cleared away, revealing an ancient citadel. So Mobius had not lied. Or perhaps this was simply another of the time streamer's illusions meant to slow my true endeavor. I sought to unravel the mystery of my fate, and in this image lay my first clue. For this scene depicted the forging of the Reaver, the weapon destined to become my prison, and I recognized its maker. The years had changed him, but this was unmistakably the vampire Vorador, 
And in this era, he still lived. If I could reach him before Mobius's mob hunted him down, he would provide the answers I sought. These images chronicled Vorador's creation. As I already knew, he had not been born a vampire, but had been turned by the infamous Janos Ordren. But this mural suggested that Vorador's origins were even more significant. Apparently, he was the first human to whom the dark gift had been passed. This was the vampire's desperate bid to preserve their bloodline, for their enemies had cursed them not only with bloodthirst, but with sterility as well. Once again, I beheld the pillars of Nosgoth, crumbling in decay now, following the corruption of the Circle. Here I would find Ariel, the spectre of the murdered Balance Guardian, and the last pure, undefiled member of the Guardian Circle. Bound here upon her death, she was doomed to haunt these pillars until her successor fulfilled his terrible duty, and Balance was restored. What manner of creature approaches? I know you well, Ariel, though you do not yet know me. I have no time for riddles, strange one. All you have is time. I have come to seek your guidance. I counsel only one man, and you are not he. But you will know him soon. The contagion of your kind is coming to an end. My kind? What exactly do you think I am? Your name shall remain unspoken, as decreed by our ancestors. You serve the one who so brutally took my life and set this tragedy in motion. But even now, hope is at work. Balance will be restored, and your kind will be expelled forever. You have pinned your hopes on Cain. He will disappoint you. <sighs> What can you know of Cain? More than you could ever fathom. He will do what he must when the time comes. By choosing his own death. A sacrifice for the world. You don't know Cain very well. I know what he is called to do. My faith sustains me. Is it faith or fear? You know that if Cain refuses the sacrifice, you will never leave here. And you begin to suspect I will not hear your poison, fiend. Grant me the answers I require, and I will leave you to your pathetic delusions. Ask, then. I seek the vampire Vorador. To kill him, perhaps, or to join him in death. But for Cain, he is the last of his kind. Mobius's mob has done its work. My reasons are my own. His refuge lies in the heart of the Black Forest. And may you molder there together until the end comes. These murals had suffered some damage. Once again I recognized the vampire's hero. But this scene revealed something new. For here they had also depicted his destined adversary, now partially obscured who seemed to bear a flaming sword. And so I arrived at the citadel of my vampire ancestors, long abandoned since their extinction eons ago. Perhaps it still held the wisdom of its creators. Here, Mobius said I would find proof that Raziel was not what I thought he was, or hoped he would be. But in sending me here, Mobius had done me an unexpected, or perhaps an unwitting, service. For it was my <coughs> destiny, not Raziel's. My role as scion of balance, whose secrets I was here to discover. Here, no doubt, was the evidence Mobius wished me to have. For the vampires had prophesied not one, but two champions. One destined to be Nosgoth's redeemer, the other its destroyer. The vampire's hero wielded the reaver, forged for this very purpose, 
His opponent was clearly the champion of their adversaries, the Hilden, and brandished a flaming sword. The foretold outcome was unambiguous. The vampire hero would fall. Nestled deep in the Black Forest, Vorador had once held court over a private kingdom, as decadent as it was depraved. Now all was still. I hoped I had not arrived too late. Here the images were unadulterated, and their meaning ominously clear. The vampire hero, the bearer of the Reaver Blade, was confronted by an adversary worthy of his powers. The enemy race, long banished, had a champion of their own, with flaming eyes and a fiery sword. The resemblance I bore to the adversary mocked all my hopes. Had Cain been the vampire hero of prophecy all along, did he suspect what I was? For if I was this foretold adversary, then Mobius was right, and had always been right. I was destined to fight Cain and destroy him, or be destroyed. What part did free will play in any of this? So, our wretched little savior returns. Come to join the last pathetic battle of the vampire race? But on which side, I wonder? I've not come to fight you, Vorador. You don't know why you're here. I know this much, that you are the author of my fate, and as such, only you can rewrite it. <laughs> you give me too much credit. You forge the Reaver. I have seen the evidence. I was its maker, yes. Then you know its purpose. No. Only the scraps of prophecy my master shared with me. And do these scraps explain why you would forge a weapon to imprison your savior? Ah, oh, well then. It seems we have our answer. You've chosen your path. I have chosen nothing. I've been deceived at every turn. You seem to know what I am. Tell me. I thought I did, once. But now all the prophecies have failed. The pillars are corrupted. I am the last of my kind. And when Mobius's hunters find me, it will have all been for nothing. You've forgotten about Cain. Ah, yes, Cain. I fear he shoulders a greater burden than he realizes. I cannot help you, even if I was inclined to. I crafted the Reaver Blade, but only at the behest of my sire, Janos Audrin. What sorcery he and the others laid upon the sword afterward, I cannot say. Janos tried to give me the Reaver before he died. He said that it was forged for me. But what did he mean? As my weapon, or my prison? Perhaps you should ask him yourself. Janos is here. In a manner of speaking. The greatest of us all, the father of our race. The Seraphim tore the heart from his living body five centuries ago. But there's no sign of decay. How is this possible after all these years? Somewhere, the heart still beats. And while it does, the body will remain preserved. 
If his heart could be restored, Janos might yet be raised. And you haven't tried to recover it in all these years? Many times, but our enemies hid the heart too well. It was taken as a trophy to Avernus Cathedral centuries ago, where they christened it the Heart of Darkness. Believing that it embodies the essence of our dark gift, they hid the heart away, lest it fall into the wrong hands. Our hands. Redeem yourself. You may be our last hope. Perhaps you alone can find the heart, if it is meant to be found. If Janus can be resurrected, he will have all the answers you require. This key will open your way to Avernus. But be advised, there are dark sorceries at work in the Cathedral. You must be on your guard. Avernus is in flames, and with it, our hopes may evaporate. How can I find the heart in the midst of such chaos? You must act quickly. But beware an ancient evil dwells within, long unspoken among our kind. Undoubtedly, this is the source of the corruption that infects the circle. If you are to succeed, you must resist its influence. This history in part I knew already. How as the vampires began to die out, the pillars summoned human guardians to fulfill their roles. It seemed the ancient vampires had adopted and when necessary, abducted the human guardians and made vampires of them when they came of age, until the humans rebelled against their masters. And here, I made a surprising discovery. It was Mobius, the time streamer, and Mortanius, guardian of death, who led the bloody revolt. Now, I understood why Mobius hated me so intensely. I was the first vampire guardian in all these centuries, and he knew what my coming signified. Or perhaps, I reminded him of all he had forsaken. I was confronted again with depictions of the vampire's champion, the bearer of the Reaver Blade. And here too was his Hilden adversary, with blazing eyes brandishing a flaming sword. Two heroes locked in combat which only one would survive. But which one? These murals prophesied two possible outcomes. I didn't know what Mobius was trying to concoct, but this all seemed too convenient. For my ancient ancestors, the Dark Gift was clearly a curse, damning them to a kind of spiritual purgatory. But why were they compelled to seal this chamber so securely? Perhaps the lock was not meant to keep intruders out, but to imprison something within. Cain, scion of balance, savior of Nosgoth. What is this? Your arrival is foretold. The fates have willed it. Is that so? I am the oracle of your ancestors. I can provide the answers you require. You needn't speak. I know your mind. You seek knowledge of your creature, Raziel. This I can offer, if you will look. He has found the body of Janus Audrey. He journeys now to Avernus Cathedral to seek the Heart of Darkness. You know what this means. And why would I trust your prophecies? These events are already written just as you feared. But there is still time. He can be stopped. If Avernus is in flames, Raziel is five centuries beyond my reach. 
I may aid you in this regard as well. This portal will transport you in time to the very hour that Raziel arrives in Avernus. This task is yours to carry out, since it was you who made him what he is. When you are ready, you may pass through. I knew, of course, that this oracle was not to be trusted. But in the end, what choice did I have? This peculiar sensation was familiar to me, and the chamber did indeed appear altered by time. In this regard, at least, the Oracle seemed to have been truthful. I have delivered you faithfully to the very hour you desire. You know what must be done, Cain. There is only one way to prevent Raziel from doing great harm. He is not my enemy. But you are his. I could see the city of Avernus in flames. The Oracle had indeed brought me to the time it promised. It might also be true then that Raziel was already there, seeking the heart of darkness. If so, he had to be stopped. I could not allow Janus to be raised. Somewhere in this great cathedral, the heart of darkness lay concealed. The city outside was in chaos, and the cathedral would not be immune for long. During such times, buried secrets were often suddenly revealed, or lost forever. I had seen this symbol throughout these ruins. I should have realized what it was they worshipped. Now there was no question, for this scene depicted the ancient vampires' torment and despair as their curse cast them from the wheel of fate. So this was the god whose abandonment had driven them to madness and suicide. Finally, I understood. It was not the bloodthirst, but their immortality that was the true nature of their enemy's curse. The wisest, strongest, most noble race, gulled by the voice of that old parasite. But I had seen him, and whatever he was, he was no god. As the handsome coffin hides the putrefying corpse within, the great cathedral of Avernus seemed to hold its own secrets, hidden in the catacombs beneath its vaulted chambers. Was this the source of the corruption that infected Nosgoth? Vorador had hinted it something more. History is written by the victors. Beneath the vaults of Avernus, I discovered scenes that told a familiar story, but from a very different point of view. This was the work of the enemy race, and revealed what the vampire histories had conveniently omitted. How the noble vampires, God-ridden and righteous, had started the wars that would destroy both races, victor and vanquished alike. Their adversaries opposed the vampire's god and refused to submit to the wheel of fate. For this, they were banished. I now understood the poetic irony of their curse, and my resemblance to the vampire's enemy no longer seemed so accidental. The banished race foretold a hero who would deliver them from their oppressors and destroy the shackles of the vampire's tyrannous god, the same hero that bore the flaming sword. What game was this, where every player on the board claimed the same pawn? So, Raziel, your true nature is finally revealed. You were never the vampire's savior. It is to the Hilden race you belong. And when Cain realizes this, what do you think he will do? Great 
Pasha Dick, we hear you. We We offer this sacrifice upon the altar of the world. The blood of our firstborn to be sacrificed to you. In the depths of Avernus Cathedral, I stumbled upon a bloody ritual. Was this the source of the corruption that had overtaken the city? May this blood nourish you for all eternity. Nourish your wrath from us, great God. The wrath of Hasha Gik has once more been averted. Depart now, as ever, in his service. We tremble and we obey. Praise to Hasha Gik and ever praise. Hasha Gik. Hasha Gik. Hasha Gik. What was it that these deluded humans worshipped with such fervor? Was this the dreaded unspoken that Vorador had warned me about? The so-called guard inhabited this hideous pit. I was about to meet it. Smell no blood. Throat cut first, blood gouging, then it falls into the pit. The sacrifice is rejected. You will know my wrath. Not possible. No, it could not be. Stand away, monster. No. That voice. Not possible. I know that voice. But he fell. The abyss. He ended there. I did not fall into the abyss. Oh. It remembers that, does it? I was thrown in by my own brethren. I heard what you did to them. And now you have found me at last. Terrell! <laughs> Terrell! Yes, that was my name then. The others were grotesque, but. Yes, I am changed. I have become a god. Greater than you ever were, Raziel. You were never a god. Greater even than Cain! It is to you that these humans offer their blood sacrifices? Hush a geek! Hush a geek! Yes. But how did this happen? I was summoned. There was darkness and great hunger. And then I was found. Why do you stay in this terrible place? Why stay? Would I remain if I could get out? While they hound me, and tear at me, and... The hour is at hand, as it was foretold. Terrell? We use his voice to command the disciples above. We demand offerings to keep the host alive. He has been a durable vessel, but he can take us no further. You must prevail. The champion of our enemy draws near. No! I must have blood! Bring me blood! Or feel the wrath of your god. You! Yours! Yes, it will strengthen me against them. What are you doing? No. No more questions. No more worship. Time to run. 
Time to scream. Time to die. Yes, now. Go, speed your endeavor. Face him and kill him. Destroy the binding at last. We shall all be... Free. Come to me, my undead son. Make haste to the pillars. The stage is set for the grand finale. You will have your vengeance. Mortanius! So, you have come out into the open at last. The binding must be fragile indeed. But you will find you are too late. What am I too late for this time? No. No. Not... now. Uh, you are too late for the victory you sought. I have beaten you after all. You have mistaken my identity. Have I? You forget who schooled me in the ancient prophecies. Uh, 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 this vessel speaks truly. You are indeed overdue, but it no longer matters in the least. With or without you, we will prevail. So, I finally meet the Unspoken. And here it is, nestled in the heart of the Circle itself. Ironic. <laughs> Poetic justice. To topple the foundations of the pillars from within. We shall have our revenge in full measure and for all time. Ah! Ah! This one has little strength left. One must not break him. <sighs> Your kind does not like to lose. I seek the heart of darkness. Ah, now you think of that. But as I told you, you are too late. The heart has served its function. I have used it to set prophecy in motion. I created the champion foretold by my masters who is destined to be your destroyer. The Scion of Balance will save Nosgoth. The Pillars will return to vampire guardianship as intended, and your race will be cast down forever. Cain, you use the Heart of Darkness to create Cain. How else? I refused at first to believe the ancient myths. I thought the vampires were simply a plague upon mankind, a pestilence we had to control. But they were right, and we were wrong to overthrow them, Mobius and I. We didn't understand what it was the pillars were holding back. I have made my atonement. I will continue to make it to the end, which will be soon now. But I know Cain will set it right. He will restore balance. Uh, and none too soon. My enemy is growing stronger. Where is the heart of darkness now? Did you destroy it? <laughs> you still don't understand, do you? You cannot make use of it as long as Cain guards it with his life. Cain has it. It is in Cain. Check and mate. This deed will redeem first me, and then all, Nosgoth. It must. It... Uh, 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 this one grows weak, but we will soon have a stronger vessel. The long-awaited hour approaches. Our release is at hand. <gasps> I must finish it now.
came. Why is this no surprise? Because our destinies run together, Raziel, like two rivers that have met and can never be distinct again. At your every fatal turn, you'll find me. And the free will you said was mine. What has become of that? You still have it. And that has everything to do with my presence here now. It was your machinations that set my destiny in motion. The coin you tossed has struck the Earth. Now you must abide by its outcome. The coin is still turning, Raziel. To reach the resolution we both can live with, that will best serve our futures, Janos Audren must not be raised. Because you do not wish it. Is my free will to be exercised only when it accords with your whim? There is much more at stake in this than you know. Yes, and it is Janos who has the answers I desire. You must trust me, Raziel. Our intentions for Nosgoth, for our futures, are not so diverse. I must trust you. Or... I have not come here to threaten you, Raziel. You say that while you hold in your hand the instrument of my doom? I saved you from the Reaver once. I have no intention of imprisoning you within the blade. At least not until the moment it serves your plans to do so. You are not the only one at risk. I may carry the instrument of your destruction, but I too have taken a chance in coming here. Or oh, haven't you realized? You bear the only weapon that can kill me. Then you know what I am, and who you are. I believe I do. And still you think you can move me about like your pawn? Think again, Cain. Take heed, Raziel. Why? If we are who we are, then are we not destined to fight to the death to decide the fate of Nosgoth? Don't be a fool! I will not fight you! And that will be the prophesied hero's battle. I win because you will not fight me! <laughs> the mighty Cain, scion of balance, would-be savior of Nosgoth, surrenders before the final battle even begins! <laughs> If this will make you see reason... Now, you will listen to me. The Heart of Darkness must remain undiscovered. Great harm will come of its use. You don't know where it is, do you? No. You never looked for it. It doesn't matter, Raziel. Listen to me. You must understand that every creature is bound to one predestined path. We are all shackled. To the wheel of fate. Believe me, I know that even better than you do. All but one. Because of your remaking, you are the one unbound creature. The one among us all that truly has free will. You have a choice, Raziel. Which I'm sure I must make at your direction. Your pawn has reached the end of the board, Cain. And now my powers may even surpass yours. How ironic. If the creature that you made should prove your own undoing. Now, we finish this. Once and for all. <laughs> And you go to oblivion! Cain was gone. The madness of this place had somehow fueled my rage. And as it subsided, I felt no elation, no sense of victory. 
only a calm certainty that we had once again walked blindly into our enemy's trap. I couldn't be sure whether Cain had truly intended to destroy me, and now it appeared I would never know. In my absence, the estate had been overrun by Mobius' soldiers. I hope that they have not yet found the entrance to the crypt or discovered the body of Janos. Of Vorador, there was no sign. Raziel, the conquering hero. I understand we ought to offer congratulations. Cain, at last, is dead. I suppose you expect similar congratulations on the death of Vorador. Or has he eluded you? We have him. But not without a considerable price in blood. That will have pleased him. Let it sustain him until his head is off, and every vampire in Nosgoth at last is dead. And will that knowledge sustain you? You too are going to your death. For a true servant of the One God, death is never bitter. I will go. Again at peace with the knowledge that I have played my small part in our master's plans. Cain is at last destroyed, and you have carried out the deed. Which hero do you think you are now? The vampire savior, or the other one? Have you realized yet that it didn't matter to us which one either of you thought you were? so long as the result was the same in the end. And now, Cain is dead. Really, I cannot thank you enough. So, this has all been arranged every step of the way. And Cain thought I truly had free will. Oh, but you do. And there's the greatest triumph of all. To have compelled the one player who could choose into doing exactly what we required. Well done, faithful servant. And now, I have an execution to see to. This relic had come at so high a cost. My blood offering for the answers I sought from this enigmatic corpse. It was the price of my freedom, for which Cain had paid with his life. Had I journeyed so far and forsaken so much, only to have it end like this? I remember Raziel, the heir of prophecy. You came for the Reaver just before the Seraphon found me. You've been entombed here for five centuries. Your murderers are long dead. <gasps> five hundred years? And Vorador? Also dead. Your bloodline is erased. The age of the vampires is coming to an end. Then we must waste no time. I'm not who you think I am, nor is this a benevolent act. I have questions that apparently you alone can answer. Brazil, there are forces in this world that will strive to deceive you and pervert your destiny. But you must believe your arrival foretells the salvation of the vampire race. Why then would the vampires devise a weapon to consume and imprison their savior? No, that cannot be. While the blade yet exists, I am drawn inexorably toward my doom. It was you who bound me to this fate. Only you can release me. Raziel, you have been misled. You are ordained by prophecy to wield the Reaver. <sighs> 
And so I do, though not quite as you'd envisioned. Redeemer and Destroyer. Is it possible? Did I misread all the signs? It seems your destiny is more labyrinthian than I had imagined. You must trust me, Raziel. We may have very little time. I will convey you to the place where your answers lie. Where have you brought me? We are within the ancient citadel of the vampire race, long ago defiled and abandoned. This fortress endured through centuries of war against our great enemy, the Hilden. Yes. From this chamber, we witnessed the summoning of the pillars and the banishment of our adversaries from the land. <sighs> this is a dire omen. The binding is in peril. The hour of prophecy is at hand. It's too late. The pillars are already damned. As long as a single one of us stands, there is still hope. The pillars must not remain under human guardianship. They are not competent to serve. Why then did you allow the pillars to fall into human hands? Raziel, there is no time. I want answers. The world can end this instant for all I care. Very well. The Hilden cursed us as they fell, afflicting our race with a predatory bloodthirst. But with this transformation came our enemy's true revenge. Immortality. They liberated you from the Wheel of Fate. They imprisoned our souls in this flesh, expelling us from the purifying cycle of death and rebirth. And yet you pass the curse on. It was a necessary evil. Our immortality banished us from God's grace. He turned his sight from us and fell silent. Many took their own lives, unable to bear the separation from our God. Not you, though. Curse or blessing, it is the price we pay to keep the Hilden banished from the land. To sustain the binding, we had to preserve our bloodline, and so we passed the dark gift to the human successors of our fallen guardians. They rebelled, inevitably, refusing the curse and seizing the pillars as their own. And so we come to our present dilemma. While mankind governs the pillars, the binding decays. The Hilden strain against the barriers of their prison, scratching to gain a foothold back into this world. And what does all this mean to me? We stand at the threshold of a new eon, Raziel. And you are the fulcrum upon which our destiny turns. Beneath this room lies our innermost sanctum. The outer chamber has been opened. It appears events are already in motion. This token is the key to the mysteries you seek. I cannot accompany you. You must face this trial alone. If you prevail, you will have your answers. And if I fail the test? Then you will not return. Suicide only to escape your voice. Do not forego my favor with your impertinence, Razia. You have finally fulfilled your purpose. I am pleased. What are you trying to obliterate here then? What is it about me that has you so afraid? <laughs> your fate is trivial, Raziel. It was Cain's destiny that mattered all along. It 
message. If the sword was endowed for the scion of balance, for Cain, and he was now dead, what hope remained? I needed to find Janos, and soon. I dreaded to think what these ominous rumblings might portend. Janos, what is this? The binding is failing. All is lost. We had arrived at that cataclysmic moment when a younger Cain faced his fateful dilemma as Balan's guardian. Choosing self-preservation over sacrifice, he doomed the pillars to eternal ruin. Raziel, there may yet be hope. There is one who will be called. You must seek the Scion of Balance. Dear God! Ah, Raziel, we meet again. You have played your part flawlessly. It is gratifying to attain both freedom and vengeance in a single stroke. No! You cannot! This one is strong. Good. My next move requires a more durable host. Mortals are such fragile vessels. Willing or not, you have provided the instrument of our victory. I wouldn't celebrate just yet. You pathetic creature. You haven't got a clue. The seduction of the Circle and possession of Mortanius, Ariel's murder, the corruption and collapse of the Pillars, all orchestrated as a prelude to this moment. We sought an incorruptible vessel, and you provided one. We required the blood of our ancient enemy, and you delivered Janos Audrin. Having first been lured to the heart of darkness, best of all, you murdered the Scion of Balance to get it. We've already won. Raziel, you must not allow them to carry out their plan. Kill me, and you end it now. Suicidal like the rest of them. Know your place, Raziel. The true hero plays his role and then steps aside. <laughs> you deluded ghoul. Do you so wish to die a martyr for the vampire's lost cause? You're not leaving this chamber. I will destroy Janos if I have to. Very well then. I'll indulge you. Raziel, finish it before he returns. <sighs> oh. You should have listened to me. has its beginning. Do you see? However far you stray, you will always return to me. Surrender, Raziel. Never! <laughs> Your efforts are wasted, Raziel. That weapon you bear, however endowed, remains only a wraith blade. It cannot touch me. I will not be your prisoner. You have no choice. Your task is fulfilled. 
cane has been cleared from the board, and this chamber made ready for my more malleable servants. There is nothing more for you to do. I refuse to bend my will. It has always been my will you satisfy, never your own. You parasitic fraud. You are forced to imprison me because I possess free will. You possess nothing. As you are undying, your soul cannot be returned to the wheel. But it may console you to abide here in eternity with me. Mobius, my good servant, I call you to the place of our first meeting. Return to me here. I awoke to find myself in a shadowy realm. A disquieting stillness lay where my heart had been, the heart that had belonged to Janus Audrin all along. How is it possible that I still lived? You are still very full, Zambaka. That will go first. This realm will render you hideous. You will go mad, and will not know it. What is this place? Do you not think of this place every day, vampire? Or are we truly forgotten? forgotten? This is the exile into which we were driven. But soon now, soon we will be free. We will be free! I knew what ominous hour this was in Nosgoth's history, for here was the event that had shaped my entire existence. I had cast my fate, refusing the sacrifice, damning the pillars, and founding my doomed empire upon their ruins. I would raise the Salafan priests to be my closest lieutenants, and would one day cast the strongest of them, my servant Raziel, into the abyss, dealing one last hand to play against fate. But in the end, had it made any difference? Had I misread the signs, as Mobius told me, in my arrogance, had I missed my cast at destiny? The Hilden are merely an inconvenient consequence. They will be dealt with in time. It is a small price to pay for Cain's death. You're a bit premature. Cain! Is there a crack in your omniscience after all, Mobius? First, your omniscience, and now your powers. You're slipping badly. This is not possible. The part of me that staff affected is no longer in its place, but you already knew that, didn't you? I always was considered heartless. And now, Mobius, it is time... To kill me? Again? Your only solution for every problem. Kill! This is not a debate. You see, this time, you have nothing that I want. <laughs> Oh, you think this will matter? I serve one who has power over life and death. Then go to him. I am his obedient, 
his devoted servant. Soon, all pain will fade, and my master will bring me life once more. Master, my apologies. A momentary oversight. Somehow Cain still lives and has unexpectedly dispatched me. Make use of your good servant and <coughs> go to your master then. I release you to the wheel. Oh, God, no. Do you see it now? The monster that you served. Is this what you imagined when you worshipped it? knowledge. Go and feed it. I release you. <sighs> Your petty actions are irrelevant, Raziel. Mobius was a good servant, but he was of no further use. His long life had run its course. You see? Even when you rebel, you are doing my will. Perhaps. But something has changed, hasn't it? You didn't foresee Cain's return. You have both traced your paths along the wheel. This is where the journey ends. You haven't the means to kill either one of us. Ah, but you can be stopped. And you will come to understand how oblivion can be a mercy. You and Cain will spend eternity buried here together, praying for the merciful release of a death that will never come. But I was armed with newfound knowledge, and it burned within me. Redeemer and destroyer. Mobius had never seen his master until the Soul Weaver purified his sight. Even the ancient vampires had no idea what it was they so righteously worshipped. You must unite what has been set asunder. All the conflict and strife throughout history, all the fear and hatred, served but one purpose, to keep my master's wheel turning. All souls were prisoners, trapped in the pointless round of existence, leading distracted, blunted lives, until death returned them, always in ignorance, to the wheel. The coin is still turning. But what hope had there been? One cannot fight the unseen. Only then will the scion of balance be armed for his true endeavor. Despair, Raziel. There is no escape. It was then I knew what I had to do. I alone could end this. Cain. Do you so enjoy death? Yes. Raziel. No! Yes. This is how... No! Raziel! The Soul Reaver, pure of all corruption. This is what it is for. This is what I am for. The two become one. Both Soul Reavers, together. And the sign of balance is healed. And I am not your enemy. Not your destroyer. I am, as before, your right hand, your sword. No, Raziel, this can't be the way. And now you will see the true enemy. Raziel.
And it was then... I saw. So, I am revealed to you at last. What in hell? I am the origin of life, the devourer of death. I am the hub of the wheel, the purifying cycle to which all souls must be drawn. Had I condemned Raziel to this nightmare when I cast him into the abyss? You may ponder the futility of your ambitions as you spend a deathless eternity beneath a mountain of rubble. You and your soul reaver will go equally mad as the eons pass. The Citadel of the Apostates will become your living tomb. Your words are heartening. For you would not fear us unless we could truly do you harm. No! You are nothing! False God! This is the end. The final turn of your wheel. The strings of the puppets had become visible, and the hands of the Prime Mover exposed. Most ironic of all was the last gift that Raziel had given me. More powerful than the sword that now held his soul, more acute even than the vision his sacrifice had accorded me. The first bitter taste of that terrible illusion. Hope. Alas, poor Nupraptor, I knew him well. Well, not really. 